There we go, I think we are ready to continue. So I'm gonna host a TTF game. People are more than welcome to join. It's like, what? It, what is TTF good for? Everything. <laughs> Just one of those quests. What can I say? Let's see, do I have everything I need? I have Gearsol. I guess I could put that away. Put that in the character bank for now. Mostly need to make sure I have vices for everything. Dark Flow is nice, but QCast is so strong, I haven't really felt a need where I was like, man, if only I had this. It's more like, man, QCast exists. <laughs> it's like, do I do I need anything? I mean, I got them my vice. So it's like, I have the equivalency of charge in case I want to save money. Which I don't really care about, I guess. Charge ray gun for the boss. I guess I could flip which one that is. To be slightly more efficient. 5% more damage potentially against falls. It is my boss weapon. So we'll get rid of the one that has native, because we're doing surface earlier. So yeah, between Jaya, Disco Brave Man, Twin Blaze. I think we're good. So we were helping our friend here, Remote Battery, level up a bit. Still in the danger zone versus falls, but it's at least a lot more tolerable versus other hits. So we'll see how things go. In the meantime, I'll just fall over dead. A few angry stomps as I wait. Make sure to pause and unpause the music while we're waiting. Miles Grant's gonna mess you up, maybe. You're you're not gonna survive. Want me to drop my moons before falls? I would say don't worry about it. I mean if you have escape doll, it's fine. Your goal would will, will be to find the nearest force at all times. Hmm. I don't think I want to do a greedy clear here, since we're playing with uh, mixed characters. Let me do that, though. I do think it's worth going here. Let's move on to the next room. I just seriously drop on my material. Oh, I gotta go back. I <laughs> just... It's like, wait a minute. That's not evade material. Unfortunate. I ended up doing the clear anyway. There we go. I was there for the most important wave, which is depleting those holdouts. So technically for speed reasons, we could just literally clear the first room and then kill the guy that keeps gate keeps, but generally speaking for most IDs, it's worth at least doing the Hildelts because of the fact that they could be the Hildetors. Let's just do some damage to the boss here. If we time our shots well, we should do some big damage. Ooh, yeah, we got damage. Okay. This should be an easy phase. Goodbye. Apple Capital says Hugh Cast. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> We've been training one up. Hope you're doing well, Apple Kappa. Let chat break the boxes. I don't really want to go back for a mono grinder. I guess I'll do a greedy slime boot for PDs. Oh, that's what I'm missing. Well, that's good because I can go fix that later. Thesis is due Wednesday. Oof. Sorry to hear that. Well, I'm happy I realized that now, because that means I can skip one of the other checks later to go get my red handgun from the bank. So that's the nice thing, if you mess up, sometimes it's like, uh, I gotta go back anyway. So I think I have to 
deal with that. What I would recommend, though, for remote battery, if you could slime dupe the other room, that would be great. So if you just ignore everything and just kill the lily or whatever's needed to go to the next room, come to me. So we'll ignore this room. There's the door beyond this. We're going to kill the lily. Go in there, attack three times, and spam fire traps. Nope, don't fight those. Oh, fine, I'll go do it. I know there's a stream delay, but it's like, I really want to get the dupes. This is like the best place for materials. And it's also good for XP, actually. One, two, three. Fire trap, fire trap, fire trap. I'll telepipe from here, I guess, and let the team do the other things. Yeah, okay. The team should be able to kill the other room without an issue. So, oh, you're not going to know what to do. Never mind. I need to remember new players. Okay, I'm going to go walk here and telepipe. I did not want to do this. That's why I was wanted somebody else to take over that role. So I'm going to telepipe. And then I got to... Don't worry. I'm going to go ahead and telepipe out because I have to get my handgun. I don't normally take my own telepipe, but I think I have to. So the team can take mine since I'm in the room that's needed for it. Let me grab my gun for later. There it is. Yeah, it takes a little bit of time. So by the time I'm in here, I'm assuming they've already taken it. So we should be good. Yep, we're good. Oh, I don't see... Uh, I'm going to put another telepipe down. You don't even know how to slime dupe with casts. Oh, it's easy. Triple shot and then spam fire traps until they die. That's it. So the reason you triple shot is because the... Uh, your bolt, your traps take on the property of your last hit combo for whatever reason in the game's coding. So normally a third hit will dupe a slime if it doesn't kill them. And because of that, you can use that to duplicate slimes with traps. I don't think it should probably do that, but it's how it works. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just going to go ahead and DPS this thing out of existence for the team. There we go. Give a salute to my money, chat. We did money runs earlier to make up for how much I'm about to blow on these quests. Rip the 30k. So no worries. But yeah, generally speaking, uh, we only really need one person to slime dupe. Does it copy specials? Uh, I don't think so. I think it just is a separate flag to just check to see if it's your third hit combo. And it never technically resets. I guess if I had to give a more precise definition of what's happening. I like to confuse trap here and then walk away. We don't need to kill the gill chicks, so we'll move by them. If they happen to kill each other, it's nice, because they do give XP. Yeah, that's fun. So for this TTF, are you speedrunning or rare hunting? Uh, I mean both. I guess they answer the question. We're do it like I will do extra checks because I am not needed there. Like, I only need to show up for the Red Sinnohs. I don't really need to clear... I mean, I could clear this room, but I don't need to. So, like, for example, I know the Red is not going to spawn right away, so I'm just going to get extra clears while I'm waiting. Ah, that should be enough. So that way I just get more XP while I'm playing. So you can see, like, the Red Sinnoh timer is about here. And he's dead. The only time where uh, we will genuinely waste time is in this room. So I'm going to go ahead and freeze trap these because I want the rares from the Sinnohs here. Or not Sinnohs, the brands, I mean. So I can kill two of them. Chat just needs to kill one. There we go. Yeah, we're only going to take extra checks... If it doesn't waste time, like I kill Gilchicks, I don't really lose that much time, if any. Uh, I'm gonna switch into Twin Blaze here. So it's like, it's kind of recognizing if there's like a lot of ATP in a room. Do you really benefit from one person potentially getting one shot more on an enemy, or does it make more sense to get four PD chances or like other rares? Most of the time, it makes sense to just not care about that. As long as, like, not literally every player is doing it, it's fine. Like, two or three focus on the run is usually all you need anyway. So here, we're just gonna slip in some Twin Blaze. Oh, no, no, oh, who shoot? Oh, no, 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 did you shoot the monitor? Hopefully not. Don't shoot the monitor. We should only be Gazonding Twin Blazing. 
I didn't I heard gunshots. I don't want to hear gunshots. So between Gazan and Twin Blaze, we basically do no damage to the monitors. So that's one of the things I put in the new guide. Please don't please don't double stack on the monitors. For me, Twin Blaze does so little damage. It doesn't matter who does damage. To the monitors, like if I hit it at the same time as a Gazan player, it doesn't really matter. Unless they're like hyper, hyper geared out, then like maybe it makes a difference. Because you have to put it this way, like a near max FOMOR would have like what, 1030-ish plus 800 Excalibur-ish. And like it is good, but if they're also not running machine percent, then my uh, Hue cast with literally just Twin Blaze plus that is good. Yeah. It's just one of those silly things. Like, if they're a hyper optimal, don't get me wrong, then I won't twin blaze at all. But that scenario is extraordinarily rare. And it's easier for, uh, especially people who are not used to technique casting. Why am I hitting everything but the thing I'm looking at? There we go. Him, please. Vulcan, please. <laughs> it's like a one. <laughs> Half his body was in my targeting and didn't target him. Uh, this one is controversial. I like to confuse trap this. But I think people are so used to freeze traps there that I feel like I would really confuse them unless I explain why I do that. The reason I confuse trap there is in particular for red ID, there are a lot of Disco of Brave Man chances you're giving up by just choosing for them to not fight each other with confuse. So I've gotten used to doing the red ID runs, plus it's four PD chances potentially. Because what'll happen is usually someone will go up on the platform and that'll summon the Arlen that I just killed there. But if they stay up there that means the confuse trap will continue to do damage because they'll keep hitting each other as long as you're sort of in the same room so from that perspective they just clean up those kills and then take the telepipe to go help because they, they won't be able to assist in time for this room most of the time now for sky id we do the extra checks for uh psycho wand and the deldies the deldies i think give lavis cannon and the uh Sorcerer gives Psycho Wand specifically, so we always do that check. Otherwise, we just try to stick to optimal. So this is where a lot of players have to practice this. I don't know what else to tell you other than to practice. At this point, since I've had to play with Dark Flow Hunter enough, I genuinely don't get hit by them at all anymore, except if I get really unlucky with a shot timer, or I'm looking at chat. This is pretty much it. So this will be like one of the few times I don't actively look at chat. So they start off the same way every time. There's three in a row you could basically shoot. So if you're a ranger, you can hit all three without moving, which is hilarious as player one. But from this point, I'm basically looking to just look for the big gaps. So you don't even have to necessarily be monitoring your minimap constantly. Just look for the gap. And then uh, here, depending on how players have pulled them, oops, depending on how players have pulled them, it will be either very easy or very hard because I don't believe it's random at all. I believe it's always the set spinners will rotate through. With the difference being that some of them might home depending on how close other players are, and that adds a little bit of RNG to it. Now, I don't like how far these two are. So this is kind of pulling me too far from the boss. I think I'm going to get closer to the next phase. I'll take a time loss there. Because me not vicing when I'm the main ATP is a big problem. So I, I will purposely spend two seconds just to get in position. Oh, nice getting the Gafoe stacks. Because that way I could just do something like this and just attack from here. Instead of going full screen walking and not being able to do anything. Because I'll, I'll naturally have some time where I'm going to be swapping weapons anyway. So I don't need to be in like a perfect, perfect position. I could take like three to four steps every time. Uh, to correct my position and as long as I'm within that range it's fine. I made a small mistake there in my menuing because I should have sorted so that my charge handgun was at the top so that cost me an attack. Unfortunate. Almost got the kill. So when in doubt just hug the sides of the arena to take less damage. Everybody's on the same side though, it's not good. Okay, I'm gonna volunteer to go in the middle so we stop taking damage. Got a little lucky there. If it did it again, it probably would have killed two players. <laughs> Based on how much damage we were taking. Oh boss. So 
Hopefully, remote battery doesn't get hit. I mean, there's not much he could really do. I'm gonna do three normals there, actually. Rip. I'll revive him in a moment. Oh, the damage is so high. Ooh, we got short cycled. That's brutal. Okay, I'm gonna regen health by just standing still. Ooh, bad cycles. Whoever is soul linked, I'd like to just say, I'm so sorry. You are not surviving me. I'm sorry. Wow, the short cycle again. That's so bad. That adds so much to the clock. That is really, really unlucky. We lost like a minute plus due to that. That really sucks. If I burst properly, the player will not die. There we go. <laughs> QCast logic. If if boss health less than 1500, go for charge kill. <laughs> GG. Is that one okay? We're in the warm-up phase of things. Also, I didn't realize how many of us were Sky ID. That's kind of funny. So yeah, very unfortunate falls pattern. Wasted a lot of time. Both in the prior phase and this phase. Sadly, thing of interest has dropped. I'm not really gonna go pick up a Grants 24. That's not worth my time. So we'll do the same thing again. This time I have my handgun, so I don't have to go back for that at least. It lost like a tiny bit of time, but it was not as bad as the falls lost for sure. So I'm going mostly money neutral in the run, with the expectation that I have to hard carry damage, which I think is fair. I am cast. We'll do a few more of these. Yeah, we have 13 on to make sure we ha do as much damage as possible with Disco Brain Man, and I specifically uh, asked Hellcleave to look out for a machine percentage Disco Brain Man just to make sure I delete uh, Vol up that much faster. I think our equipment is pretty good. The only thing I might want to work on is getting a red handgun with machine percentage for single player. It's not really needed in the multiplayer run unless uh, the boss gets really out of control, then I can slow it down with red handgun. But, yeah. Funny enough, the red handgun does allow me to one-shot the spinners, so it still has a purpose. Even if I use charge ray gun. Charge ray gun actually does not one-shot the spinners currently. And all I care about is one-shotting spinners. Yeah, we try not to, like, hunt every possible hunt. Maybe one day we'll do, like, a full clear. Just to showcase those. Maybe we'll have a special day where we try to full clear Terrell's min clear TTF, max clear TTF. Do it in one session. Wouldn't be bad. So yeah, I do want to check these boxes, because I think they are worth checking. Because those can have PDs. Now the rest of the room is arguably not worth it. I could Disca, since I already have Disca, just to get a free couple kills, but then I need to move on. So if I'm like really looking to squeeze out XP in the run, I'll do something like that. That way I only, I'm like only a little behind. Like I'm one wave off. I think it's fair, clear. So just showcasing, like, the team is basically at that point, like, 
maybe I could push faster, but again, it, the more optimized people are, the less the less time I have to kind of do those optional runs. And it also means that not as many people are needed to carry. It's kind of like a, a paradox, as it were. So potentially you can end up getting a lot of stupid kills without losing any, if any, time. So this is, I think this is more accurate to say this is like what the same kind of things I would do during anniversary, Easter, Halloween, Christmas, where I squeeze out as many kills as possible while still doing the runs that I want to do, uh, I think is good there. As is it before, it, the, the, only, the only time we lose like a lot more time would be the Del D hunts. That adds like 12 or so seconds to the run. But when you're playing like Sky ID, it's like, that's what you do. But I mean, otherwise, you just kill the sorcerer and teleport out, kind of things. But like, see how like I'm first person here. Like, I'm not bothering to go back for the boxes. So like, I I could technically be holding a direction during the dragon, but I also want to make sure that I'm not too far away in case it is a material. So that one's kind of like a catch twenty two. What what would save me more time? Me double backing to boxes or going for the next area. Ooh, chat. Mm, I'm not gonna bother. That's in a bad position. It's dead center, so that means if I were to fire trap that, that would kill it instantly. So I'm going to ignore that hunt. I'm going to make up for it in the next room, though. So again, we'll let Confuse Traps deal with those. People can kill those, honestly, because there's basically a waiting game that goes on the, in this room anyway. So if you have, like, any decent ATP, it's there. Oh, I think we're having the other person try it. Yeah, I could watch them do some box runs. So for example, I can clear this room. As long as somebody slime dupes, I'm happy. I don't care who it is. <laughs> it could be a force or a cast. So I'll kill these, for example, just for free XP. Because either way, like, you're committing to basically come back here and kill. It's so, like, for example, I know a Volmer will appear behind me, and I could take the same telepipe as the other player. So these are the things that you could do potentially to optimize uh, your run, quote unquote. Like, see how I just did that? Then I could take his telepipe. I think I'll help them clean up the slime duping though. So from that point, you literally just spam fire traps over and over. So I'll do a drive by. I should clean them up. There we go. Normally we don't have to assist with it, but I just figured I'd showcase it. I think the sweet spot is like level 130, where you kill in like just the right amount of fire traps where you could kill within like four. And then it, and even then if you have weaker fire traps, the other trick, if you've never done it before, is that their spawn points are in the corners. So if you imagine a big square around the arena, with the gap in the middle being the center of the square, if you bomb the four corners with fire traps, it kills them all instantly anyway. And that includes the dupe duplicated slimes. So basically people will do like a Z, like a Z zigzag potentially to go hit them, depending on where they are in the room to kill them, or they'll do the other things. Oh, I was hoping for some box rares. Should have moved then. Unfortunate. But either way, I'm just gonna spam some confused traps here. With Zalore, they die so fast. Like it's actually insane. Like we got a kill already. And I did almost nothing different than compared to like freeze trap meta. I mean, look at that damage. Two cows, please. <laughs> so yeah, we got two extra kills there. And again, that's PDs, that's XP. So for people looking to level up, squeezing those into a run so that people level faster is so good. The worst part, though, is if those guild chicks drop a PD. That That's where things actually get sad, because then the, the, the whole group is like, hold on, gotta go deal with it. So I don't have to be the first in the next room, so I might as well delete some of these while I'm waiting. So as long as somebody goes to the next room, we don't lose time. But then by the time we kill this one, we need to go. We want to be too, too greedy. We want to be walking in the room when we see Sinnoh Red start to fall, which is about here. So our timing was about right. Although unfortunately, Murphy stood to the side there, which caused us to whip the shots. So if he had stood in the center, actually, that would have caused us to uh, combo. That's fine. I don't think confused traps are worth that on them, sadly. The Sinnohs tend to teleport backwards and then they confuse each other. Nice kill. Nice kill. Nice kill. 
So technically, if we had a ranger in the party, they would be going and using the cannon, cannon rouge on the target in the corner. But since we're two, we're three hunters, excuse me, in a force, uh, we don't have that shortcut. Although I guess maybe uh, kunai would still work. I can't say I've ever tried solo kunai in that strat same strategy. Normally I'm killing the brands, no matter what. I guess I should experiment with that. Yeah. I, well, I mean, they can't... I was gonna say, they, they can't... I don't think the, the Humars have access to a bazooka for casts in general. Unless that bazooka specifically is cross-class, in which case that's interesting. Also, I realized... In scratching my eye, I did not switch into Twin Blaze. I missed my inputs. Let's start the stun lock again. There we go. Uh oh. Unfortunate. I'm gonna pop that so that way it doesn't come back up. There we go. So we got a nice Gazan loop. Ooh, didn't stun it. That's unfortunate. Oh well. Okay, recovery. That was my fault for not initially slowing it down. I should make up the damage here. Ooh, our team doesn't do enough DPS. I should have done a DPS check. That was my bad. So if you play with very high level players, that combo there will kill. <laughs> but I forgot. Oops. Yeah, Disco Brave Man makes a huge difference here. I'm actually surprised Dango is still using Jizai here. Do you have a 13 plus Disco, Dango? Because that, that way out damages Jizai. <laughs> Too used to Chris and Hellcleave? You're not wrong. Yeah, I'm, I'm used to their setup. They, they, he doesn't, uh, Chris doesn't use 13. Uh, but I know Hellcleave does. That is a fast clear. Yeah, like, that's one of those ones where you will be very surprised how much time you save there. And it's also good to get into habit of using it regardless, because, uh... Humar still can use Dark Flow, so what you'll end up doing on the other one is when the monitors are still intact, but the things are blowing up, you'll end up just go Brain Manning to lower your HP. Oops. I didn't think they would turn to face me that quickly. This is unfortunate. Ooh, big yawn. Okay, not the clear I was hoping for, but I'll take it. So sadly, that wasn't really a big time loss because you, if you don't first, if you don't quick cycle it anyway, you have to wait. So in a way, it di that didn't really matter. I lost maybe a second tops, even though that seemed bad. We ended up getting more kills, and it ended up being good anyway. So we gotta be a little careful here. A bit of free strap down for safety. I'm, I think I'm the only person in this room. Yeah. Put down another free strap. Free strap, please. Thank you. <laughs> it's like, you'll detonate eventually due to my proximity to it. I would appreciate it if you detonated. So yeah, if we were if we were doing, for example, like Viridian, where they don't care about the run at all, then you know we usually just teleport to people from the other platform. Oh, nice, 101. Slowly getting up there with Hugh cast levels. Yeah, we equip the red handgun here to first phase. What would I be doing, Baldot, if no twin blaze? Uh, your goal is to equip your most damaging thing, preferably your melee weapon. So that way, if the stun lock does not happen for one reason or another, like you need three monitors and you only get a two monitor cycle with spread needle or somebody misses Kazan or somebody forgets to shoot the monitor like I did, uh, then you just need to burst the other turret that's red so that way we don't get hit. If you burst that with melee, preferably, it's great. But be ready, like equip melee, but hover in your quick menu your ranged option so that way you could just cancel out if it's melee and melee or if it is ranged, you hit confirm and then you shoot. And that's how you kind of optimize your time there. So just be in a position where you can see most of the room. And then hopefully you get lucky that it's either right next to you or right in front of you. 
Because both are very good. When it's like behind you by a diagonal, that's probably the worst. Since if you're not really comfortable with blind firing, you're very likely to miss. Uh, I think my positioning here is fine. If I get really close to the boss, like I take little micro steps, I could potentially go into charge ray gun. Now the problem is, I remember before, I don't think I sorted after the prior run, so I'm going to recognize my charge ray gun is not at the top. Yeah, so that that cycling misses me a cycle. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sort my inventory while the weapon is equipped. And what that'll do is ensure that... Actually, I have vice equipped with invulnerability. So what I'm going to do since... Oh, never mind, we're off. So basically what I'm looking to do with this boss is if I can get close, I vice. If I can't get close, I charge ray guns. So since I'm able to get a good angle here, I could do a lot of damage. And the boss very foolishly decided to do that attack again. So what uh, Murphy will end up doing, or what Murphy's doing there, is to avoid the team dying to spinners, he's stacking Gafoe. It, In a truly optimal run, we don't need it, but I think that might be worth putting in as a tip. Like, if new at game, then do this. We're going to go for the hard-to-do charge Vulcan combo. Oh, I'm out of range by a step. That is so sad. <sighs> Try going for it. I got punished. Your foot needs to be touching the barrier, but you can't be max distance, if that makes sense. I made up for it with damage there, at least, though. If I had landed that combo, I probably could have killed the boss there. So the problem is that, like, if you walk all the way to the edge, it's too slow to get uh, a full combo out, and you'll only get three hits. But if you shoot too early, then you whip everything. Boss is dead. So you have to fire before you see the visual indicator. It's one of the only times in the game where you have to do that, and it's just not something I practice a lot. So I got it a lot last session, but I just gotta practice it more. Like again, you wanna be near the edge, but not on the edge, because if you go to the edge, it physically took you too much time to walk there, and you won't combo. That's probably the only thing that requires like a lot of practice in the run, to be honest with you. Because it is, it is purely you have to stop at a certain distance or it doesn't work. And if you go too far, you end up losing... I mean, just think about it this way. A Hugh cast Vulcan not hitting is, like, easily a thousand plus damage. So when the boss said 3200, I don't think I would have killed, per se. But I, I could have put the boss at, like, 1200. And if everybody practices that, it ends up almost always guaranteeing a first cycle. It is difficult, though. Because if you mess up like I did, I, I pulled it like literally a quarter of a step too soon, and you don't get it, which is very sad. But I think the rest of the phase went fun. So this will be a level up for me, which is kind of nice. So just need to make sure in between runs we re-equip the vice. So if you see when I sort now, charge ray gun is at the top always. So this means that no matter what I'm doing, Usually, my safe choice is to go into charge Raygun, so if I constantly flip-flop between Vice and Raygun, it's just much easier with Raygun at the top. Because I'll be wielding Vice most of the time, and I should know where it is in the menu. Maybe I can put that in the tips for the guide. If you store it with your held weapon, it keeps it at the top, which makes it very easy to swap into for situational items like hell. Just gonna make a note for that. Sort with a quick item to guarantee it's on the top of the menu so that you can fast swap into hell slash charge slash berserk. This is Murphy's last bus. Well, thank you, Murphy. We'll see what we could do. Then after this, we'll do a couple RTs. I still got like another hour and a half in me or so. Then it is break time for me. Oh, more like an hour 20, actually. So maybe this will be the last TTF, and then we just do three RTs to end? I think that's fun. 
So if anybody want, wants to hop in for some blue ID RTs, I'll do all the buffs that I need to do. Although I think we'll need a Ranger. <laughs> Otherwise, we're going to have a lot of trouble with Gal Griffin. So if, if desperate, we can ask Dango to be blue ID for us so I could be the Ranger. Uh, Okay, Channel Ray popped that, that's good. So that's like a quick check that loses like a couple seconds, but again, checking the box rares. Sometimes really important depending on your ID. We might get a kill here due to the Zalore. So we're gonna thank Murphy for Zaloring. Normally Bartles hurt themselves very slowly. Talos are really good at killing themselves in a confused trap, even in multiplayer. Uh, but none of the other enemy types are. But with the Zalore, it pretty much guarantees they die. So we got like three extra kills thanks to Murphy's Zalore. Like there's just little stuff like that where like you just get... You lose like basically almost no time. Like maybe the time it takes to cast Zalore and then you keep walking. But you end up just getting more checks in the same run. I find that pretty important to do if, for anniversary event in particular. If you're looking to take advantage of like the high rare rate and things like that as well as drop rate while still looking to go for like red ring uh then why not both <laughs> learn how to kill optimize so we'll build meter here because why not yeah we're helping uh murphy basically level up who's playing his b he's just getting stronger and stronger with the fomar Ooh, slightly delayed so i only got i think one mech bullet on them to reduce the health. Oh, you thought you were taking off, Dragon? Nice try. I guess that's the other tip. Uh, see, that's so specific. I don't know if I want to put that in the guide. If you shoot prior to the boss being targetable, this is like one of the other scenarios where you fire before you see the indicator. Uh, you could get out two sets of mech gun combos instead of one, or potentially only hitting four hits, uh, depending on how you time the mech gun. So that means that if you're a weaker player and you really want to make sure that the dragon does not lift off because you just do not have anti-air options left, uh, timing so that your bullets hit it within a few frames, doesn't have to be frame perfect, let's say like even 15 frames, uh, is all the extra time you have to do another combo. So if you get like hardcore greedy with it, oh, Murphy Dupin. I'm gonna deal with this, don't worry about it. I'll clean up the other rooms. So as long as the other team deals with the big slimes, we're good. Here's an example where the lore with uh, Confuse is really good. So we could kill this entire room without wasting any time in it. And all I have to do is basically put another Confuse trap down. Simple. And okay, Murphy's gonna go ahead and dupe. So I'm going to show you what you would do. So let's say Murphy was the one duping. I'm going to show you what I would do if I was looking to deal with these enemies. So generally speaking, if you're not looking to do like the optimal kills, basically help the people clear this room and then you run over here to telepipe. Looks like all the slimes are spawned. So you can see there's like little things here. Watch how effective this is. So I'm going to bomb where all those little indicators are. Well, I did it in the wrong order, but check, it's the idea. And basically it kills all the slimes. It's very dumb. There you go. They should all die from this. Very fair. That's an actual one shot. That does not matter what your level is. So that's knowledge that fire traps that hit a spawn point of a slime kill them instantly. So depending on who's slime duping, you can just assist them by cleaning it up with a zigzag. I unfortunately did like a C, which is not what you're supposed to do. I meant to go diagonal. Because that way if you make the Z by starting at like the bottom right of the letter and going to the upper left, essentially you end up in front of the door and it's more optimal. Even if it takes you slightly longer to hit them, just due to its end position it's better. I'm going to save myself some money there. So I like to hold down during this cutscene because that'll walk you towards the other end of the raft. But if you let go, you might end up going the wrong way. Let's see if I let go by accident. Nope. So I leveled and ended up where the boss drop was by holding down. And that lets me clear really quick. Since most of the time I will never get a box rare there, that's probably one of the few times where it's just 100% safe to say I don't need to interfere. So by putting two confused traps there, I guarantee several kills. And by making sure that I'm moving forward before the Sinnoh Red falls there, I make sure the Sinnoh Red doesn't leap. 
So there's like a lot of manipulations that I do that I I will describe for people that haven't seen it before. If you were to literally watch him spawn and let him fall and you're not walking forward, he will leap at you and that usually makes it more annoying for other players to kill. So we have to be a little careful with that. So since I'm not the first person to the door, I don't lose any time by just killing these while I wait. I'm gonna wait for like one more kill. Here we go. Now I leave. That guy body blocking me could actually be an issue. So we can set up a freeze trap. So if we wait for the graphic of his leg to spawn, we can actually time a freeze trap so it will always go off without me ever needing to shoot it. Uh, but we don't we don't super care. Ooh, you can freeze trap them. Mmm, that's not ideal. Rip Murphy. We believe in you, Murphy. So I just did a normal... I noticed I missed my normal combo there. So I did a sacrifice, which is usually a bit riskier. But since I know my freeze trap was perfectly positioned, I knew it would cover me. So I think the Hue cast at high ATP is able to kill all three brands by himself. Without them unfreezing, which is insane. I don't get why he's allowed to do that. I'll take a heal here, yeah. So I'm gonna just- I'm just gonna immediately Twin Blaze. Hopefully that'll slow it down enough. So yeah, your goal is to just make sure- maybe you put- maybe you walk slightly behind like the one that you're on currently, and just get ready to hit any three that are near you, like your immediate left, your immediate right, or melee in front of you. If you do that, I think that's as optimal as you could get. It's hard to hit it with the other items. There we go, slow it down a little. So because Twin Blaze does so little damage to the monitor, it gives our Gazan casting friend a lot of leniency. And ideally, we will never see the boss do anything other than this. Oops. The Gazan stopped for some reason. The way this boss works, for people that don't know, it only cares about your ATP. It doesn't matter what you hit it with. So, for example, um, I'm wielding Twin Blaze. It's technically doing 20 to the monitor, but instead it's checking my ATP and taking my Hue cast damage to its face. It has a lot of invulnerability frames, so that's why people don't like stacking on it. So it isn't like every time you hit it, the boss takes damage. I'm actually not going to free the other player. I'm just going to kill the boss. Now that was called a damage check. <laughs> I'm just like, I, I'm just gonna kill the boss, it's fine. That's one way to free a player. Made Dangle sweat a little though. Why do I keep missing my target? There we go. Welcome Nate, hope you're doing well. Uh, We'll showcase a fast clear here, because I haven't showcased it yet. So I like to do what I call the zigzag through here, so I kind of maneuver between them. And if I freeze them and then confuse them, I'm actually in a position to hit this thing before it does anything. And you get the fast cycle there. I don't know how many people know they could do that, by the way. It's just, I thought I'd throw it out there, I already killed the sorcerer. <laughs> it's very fast though. So it could be, it could, it could confuse players when you do it if you don't inform them that you're going for the fast one. Because normally you have to wait for the thing to spawn and everybody's like taking time to reposition, but like you genuinely don't need to do that. I'm getting kind of low on healing, a little concerning. Again, our goal here is to just spam freeze traps like there's no tomorrow. Hopefully not take damage. There we go. Time to run. This has a pretty fast clear. We saved like almost a minute comparatively jump team. <laughs> I'm going in with three three diamates, three trimates. Making dinner, nice, nice. Hope you get something good. Oh, look at that. Remote battery almost at 104. Slowly climbing out of insta-death range on the boss. Yeah, as I said before, you'll notice that it's a set pattern, but how they react to the players I think is also not random. But depending on what players do, it makes them feel random. So I'm going to go this way, because I'm going to recognize that Fireball doesn't hit the outskirts. Which just put me in kind of a weird spot, because I don't want to be down here for the next portion. Then do some dodging there. 
And again, it's important more to dodge than to shoot. Like, just don't don't take unnecessary damage. So now I'm in a really good position for the next phase. So if I kill, like, one more, it should be over. Two more. Oh, did team, did team miss some? See, that's where I'll also get hit. <laughs> because I, I thought it was over. We did two cycles. I guess we missed some? Wow, we missed a lot if we were still going. Huh. Yeah, that was... Huh. Okay. I guess we missed more than I thought. Our health po total doesn't super matter, because we're going to be vicing anyway. Anyway, let's go ahead and do this. There's my my slingshot bullets coming in. So here what we're going to do is now that we've put the charge ray gun at the top, I'm going to try to aim at the boss while walking and immediately swap into charge ray gun and hopefully I can get two shots off. And that's an extra 600 damage because I sorted properly. I'm going to die mate here over my other options. I'm going to hope I don't get hit here, but I probably will. Fortunate. Uh, I'm getting very dangerously low on healing, actually. This is gonna be very interesting. Oh, the boss heard me and decided to give me a good pattern. Nice. Oh no, team didn't have the damage! Uh, there we go. <laughs> Alright, so... I will not be able to do a very long cycle of this, so I will probably have to go to Murphy at some point for healing. I think I have four heals left. And I have to heal here, because I'm probably going to die. So we're going to eat our trimate here, I think. I uh, I recognize I was too slow to that, so I just decided to go for the three-shot cycle. If Chad is wondering what happened there. Okay, I'd rather... Okay, if it's going to short cycle, I'd rather do it right now. Okay, short cycle, perfect. This is one time I'm not mad at the short cycle, so the boss hasn't taken 50% of its health, so it's going to do this attack again instead of the soul link, which I prefer. So I'm going to stay near the group so I can get healed. I'm going to choose not to hit the boss even though I can. Now we go for the kill. So this gives us more time, and can be faster than the other methods. As long as we don't get short cycled here, we're fine. And they'll foey just to do extra damage. Yeah, so you can see their foeys actually matter. Like, they could actually kill it with foey here. And I'd finish it with a normal attack. Nice. And I wouldn't have been able to do that had they not been foeying. So foeying is important. <laughs> Even in multiplayer with its high resistance, they took off like a thousand or so health. And when you only have a split second to kill, that matters. Because it's not like they're losing damage otherwise. It's just a free a thousand damage. Not bad. Since I know I'm going to be going back to the shop, I'll pick up random items to sell. So I'll sell these, which is better than nothing. And I made sure not to Jaya as much, too, because I knew I'd be purchasing. My goal is to go basically money neutral. And because I sorted, I don't have to worry about my inventory, because all my important items are at the top. Restock here, restock here. So yeah, at least like 5k? I'm okay with that. That means I could get away with my 130,000 for uh, Jaya. For quite some time. So yeah, not bad. Okay, so is there anybody looking to hop in for RT? We're gonna bid Murphy farewell, hopefully he gets some rest. I'm thinking I'll probably bring in a ranger for chat. Technically I could run yellow ID, but I prefer to bring in somebody I guess I could make it as yellow ID. Doesn't really matter. I preference would probably be blue ID, but if we have to run out on yellow, that's also fine. So we'll see if we have a fourth person. Because that'll change the team comp. Welcome, Charlie. Hope you're doing well. Uh, 
Uh, I think you're bringing a force. I, I can bring a ranger for damage. I'm just contemplating who should actually make the game. Hopefully we have a fourth player. If not, it's not a big deal. So we didn't play the Hunu role a lot today, but I think with only three people, I have to play ranger. Or else we're just not going to do enough damage. Versus the other bosses. Like, it's just not happening. We're just not going to clear anything. Gal Griffin without a ranger is horrible. Like, as easy as Olga Flow would be with Hucast, and even Dragon to an extent, Worm Boss be kind of annoying. So I'm going to bring in the damage. I don't lose that much ATP, but I get Bazooka, which is more important. Thank you again, Murphy. So if there's anybody that wants to hop in for an RT, we have an open slot. Otherwise, I do not mind doing a three-man RT. This character will carry damage. He's at 1358 ATP. It's still pretty good. Plus, he has red ring. But he does not really care about this run. Oh, I have a random hero ability. I guess I could get that away at some point. Uh, I guess I'll let Dango make it. I do like blue ID. I don't mind making ye yellow ID later. I think if we get another player, if they end up playing Force or another Ranger, then I think I would probably make. But blue ID, I think, gives us like the 501 and everything else. Dump Scythe says, on my way, sure thing. More than welcome to join. So we're in block two of Fodra. Let Dango make the game. I could probably make a few. Unless you really want Galatine, then I can make some later. Yeah, the trade-off is, like, there are slightly better rares in blue. Yellow's box rares are much better. Um, and they get Galatine instead of the Griffin Wing. Let's go ahead and join the game. Password is king. So I'm going to bring in the big bazooka. I'll give this to... Remote battery if he wants to give that to another character that he has. So that way he's not like sharing units or whatever. There we go. Get rid of these. Might as well just humor myself. Any 50% in here? Nice, nice. Do they stack at all? Abilities do stack. So if you have like a Heavenly and other things, they also stack that way too. Ooh, a raw moral. Hmm. That does open it up to me playing Hunural, potentially. I guess I'll leave it up to Dango. Well, well, we'll do this run for now, then I'll leave it up to Dango. So if you don't want to play Force Dango, I can switch back into Hunural. That way we get some buffs. No matter what. Although we also have a raw moral with us, who's also very good at buffs. Two Rangers is very silly. I'm not going to be using Hell in this run. I, I don't believe in Hell in this run, to be honest. I, I'm going to believe in everybody else to have Hell. So I believe in Dango's me good. I guess in theory I could get the other one. If I'm playing Force, no worries. Just want to make sure you don't feel forced to play Force. Yeah, that's fine. As long as we have an ID that does uh, Earth Sage of Gene Flow, I don't super care. Uh, I guess if I have to kill Morphos, I should responsibly bring something. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, the understanding here is that a lot of people are going to be newer that are on the stream, so... Should be good for expectations. Ooh, I lose some ATP by having B502. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. Heavenly Power for now, because I don't care about Hell in the beginning. Then I think when I'm in Seaside onwards, I just leave B502 on. Then when I'm ready for the boss, I put Heavenly Power back on. For the minor optimization. And speaking of which, since this is going to be a long quest, let me make sure I have a backup game on the soundtrack. There we go. The soundtrack playlist, I mean. Okay. I think we're good here. So, yeah, we'll, we'll get a remote battery used to the run. Th these are... TTF is a quest you should learn. This quest is one you should probably learn, especially if you have a Hue cast. The intent being that the final boss of the run gives you something called Dark Flow, or, excuse me, gives you Parasite Gene Flow, which with a high hit caliber, 
or a Restless Lion 50 50 50, which, if you don't know what that is, definitely check out the guide later. Uh, caliber. Then you will get one of the ultimate weapons for hunters. But in the meantime, I guess I could just. I don't know. Charge Vulcan everything from existence. Casual raw cast things, you know. That was such a delay. I was not expecting that. Uh oh. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. Is that some hell that I see? It is a hell needle. Nice. Okay, then I didn't need to bring V502. I'm good. <laughs> we'll do our uh, box check. Oh, no, no, it's blue idea. It doesn't matter. Well, I guess it gets a box check. For yellow ID, it's actually important we do the box checks because you get barriers like really easily with them. I think I've gotten two this way from those specific boxes. It's kind of crazy. So yeah, so uh, Demp Scythe is basically using uh, Hell Needle, which is a spread needle type weapon that has unreduced hell. So in combination with V502, he's going to be rapid clearing. The downside to that is he will not be building meter. So your goal is, if you don't have a V502, you need to build as much PB as you can. So if you could get away with getting smacked in the face with a boss without losing any time, like for example, Dragon lifts off lands, uh, I would highly encourage you take that opportunity. There's a couple places we can potentially build meter as needed. I think we talked about before, optimally you can have like one and a half hell users in a run and not lose time if you're looking to mag blast. So, for example, if you have a Force and a Ranger, and both of them have Meekid-esque options available to them, then I'd rather two other people do ATP. So I'm going to run ATP, which I prefer to do anyway over Hell. And, uh, yeah. The reason being is that if you're looking to get a full burst kind of thing, you can have two people basically donating. So, for example, the Hell user will typically always donate. It's very rare they get the PB unless they switch off. And then on top of that, uh, the other ATPs will be the only ones that are more likely than not to get the meter. So ultimately, if you have two Hell users and a Force, that means you only have one person actually building meter. So you're not going to be able to Mag Blast. I'm not going to say it's going to always lose you time, but if you're waiting for Mag Blast, I guarantee you, you're losing time. Because we even had it where people use specifically Hell Needle too, and I don't even mean like Hell Ray Guns. And we have seen that it wastes upwards of a minute. Like, it does get you to the seabed faster, but then you just have no meter gain. So you have to take some creative damage, <laughs> I would say. So for example, if a Hell user wanted to hit 100 meter, there's what we call the Hell Cleave check in Seaside where there's a Sinnoh barrel that spawns in the optional area. So you can just get punched in the face there repeatedly and just build like 15 meter, which is faster than Chainsaw because the, they attack faster. So people might do that. I know Hell Cleave gets like hit a couple times sometimes there, but he usually just goes there for additional damage. It also lets the ATP users not worry about their targets getting held. So yeah, don't expect me to do a lot of charge here. Just building my meter. Alright, so I'm gonna switch to Cannon Rouge for this boss. So basically for remote battery, be prepared for the enemy to be on the left side of the raft. It will either be above us or to the right with the glitch. Ultimately, it's gonna sweep around to the left. From there, uh, you could just follow me for positioning if you want to shoot with your gun and also eventually punish the boss with melee. So if you follow almost literally exactly where I'm going, that'll give you a good idea of what to do. All right, so we're going to go ahead and move. I like to go in the far corner here, especially with the bazooka. The reason being is that there's going to be pygmies that are aimed at the opposite way of us. And if I just shoot these, it's easy. So I don't have to worry about paralysis. I just time the shot and then I move. Now we do a little dodging mini game, and then just stay in this corner when you're done. So I think we're done with the dodging mini game. So I'm going to choose to shoot once to stop the paralysis thing from hitting. Then I'm going to come over here, and from here, if you're playing hunter, just hit the boss with discus, and then be prepared to hit it with like Jaya or anything else you have. So I did some big damage to the boss there. 
Oh yeah, boss is already dead. It's gonna board with zero health. Congratulations, boss. And now get ready for the lineup Olympics. Is everybody ready? Everybody can play it. You have like 17 seconds to win the lineup Olympics. So here's how it works. This raft takes forever to land. So what you need to do is find the point that you need to go. So we're gonna pop all the boxes. So we're gonna line up visually with this bolt. Lineup Olympics. <laughs> If you, you as the more centered you are, the better it is. But this specific bolt, I want to make sure my foot is always slightly left of it, and then hopefully I am not angled. If for whatever reason your angle feels wrong, walk straight all the way to the opposite side and walk back. Because otherwise, if you do quick turns, the game will automatically move the camera. <laughs> and this is what you do because you have nothing better to do. Because as you can see, the game wastes your time. So I'm gonna keep my cannon rouge out, and if I lined up correctly, I just hold forward with no timing needed, and I should just automatically hit the red barrier. Ooh, I'm a little off, but I didn't have to readjust, so I lose no time. I did it, yay! <laughs> See, now you now you could say you played with the lineup Olympics. You did it. Your first ever lineup Olympics. <laughs> now I'm gonna hit all the switches. If you have kunai, this is what you would be doing. So for example, I just turn blind fire backwards to the door, kills all those. Your goal as somebody without hell is to just kill wolves if you see them, or Del Sabers, or Varans. Everything else, just ignore it. It's usually not relevant to the run. So here's a fun little thing I like to do. We're gonna try to go for it here. So I'm gonna let the team kill that. I purposely did that so I would more likely than not be first into this room. Hopefully I'm first in the room. Oh, I'm pretty close. Okay, this should still work. So they're gonna spawn the pan arms that are in the middle of the room here. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to go hard over here. And if I time it right, I can actually shoot. Oh, did it too early. I can actually shoot the uh, pan arms and destroy the switch at the same time. Oh, well, mistimed. Should have waited a, a little bit longer. But I can basically use my own freeze trap, essentially shoot the freeze trap. So that way it hits the freeze trap that I put down and it hits the pan arms and it hits the dub switch. It's a really stupid trick. It doesn't save any time. Well, it technically saves one shot worst of time, but I always go for it because I have nothing better to do. So here's an example where like knowing the switch location is important. So kunais are able to hit the switches even though they haven't descended because normally against the dub chicks, you have to kill them first in order for the switch to descend. Bazookas don't care about that. And now here's the final thing of the run where we just kill the poor Varans and delete this thing from existence. So my recommendation is, hope you get mag invincibility. Be prepared to fight forest dragon equivalency. So if you have slicer, great. If you got charged mech gun, really good. Um, let's see what happens here. I did not get invincibility. So I cannot, well, no, I did. I'm sorry, I'm not player one. So I can hold forward now and get into a good position for bazooka. So rangers cheat, they just care about bazooka. Otherwise it does damage. So just wait for its breath attack to finish. And then you should be good. So now you should be good. Be aware that it likes to take flight, and when it does so, it does a lot of damage on landing. Make sure not to be at low health, or you'll probably die. So here's the deal. We're gonna try to time a shot here to save some damage. There we go. Get a little extra damage there. A little extra damage. Ooh, only clipping it a little there. There we go. So I'm gonna walk forward on purpose to take damage here. There we go. Which seems weird, but I want to be at 100 meter by the end of the run. So I only got 3 meter from that fight, not great, from the landing. But Ranger cheats and has Bazooka, so I have like a million opportunities to get meter. Uh, generally speaking, people will pop the boxes to see if there's any good rares. Specifically, in rares, I more meant the common items that are rare to see. So sadly, nothing of hit or slash interest has dropped here. So here's where paths can really diverge. If you are really far off from having enough meter, then I would recommend really focusing on these geese. So my personal goal as a, as a hunter is I want to be at around 65 meter by the time I'm done with this area. So I will try not to shoot things that I see other people targeting. But essentially, it's going to equate roughly every kill will be a point, and at lower levels, every kill will be about two points if you do enough damage. So I'm going to use mech guns because it delivers my damage the fastest. Nice level up.
I targeted the trap and not the enemy. That was awkward. So I still got 59 meter, which is okay. So they're going to kill that one. I'm going to stay down here because I know there's going to be a lot of these. I'm going to hit the stupid traps so that way I don't have to deal with them later. Laibaku dropped again. So, so now we have a ranger going over there and popping the Brillas up, which is good. I'm at 62 meter, so I only need to get three more kills and I have enough meter. And this is before calculating the fact that I'm going to be using Bazooka on Galgriffin, where I can end up getting a hilarious amount of meter. So again, it's okay, there's ways you could get damaged. If you're not close, it's fine. There's ways you can make it up later. But that's like the personal goal. Those are the numbers I specifically look for. So like right now, if I switched over to Hell, I would probably be fine. It could speed up the run, since I don't think I need more meter for the rest of the Gal Griffin. So I can also afford to do the uh, Hell Cleave check, which gives time for ATP people to kill the geese, and I can focus the harder targets. Because those things are also kind of annoying to hell, on top of that. So yeah, like, I'm gonna purposely try to avoid some of these. So I'm already at 67 meter, and since I'm a ranger, I'm probably gonna be at, like, 75 plus when I finish this. We're already at 68 meter, and we haven't even gotten into the next room yet, which is nice. Alright, so I'm gonna go down a side path. Don't follow me. Stay going ahead. They're gonna fight the Marillas and the Geese. I'm gonna I'm gonna go on a little detour. So this is just kind of an optional boss check. Or box check, I mean. Blue ID, I think it's worth doing since you could get V501 from these. And again, this is just free kills. I'll do some box checks. So if you see an item spawn of interest, it's probably me. <laughs> Alright, so I baited him in here. So I got hit on purpose. Because I was greedy for meter. If chat was wondering why I stood in the doorway, I actually wanted to be hit. <laughs> we call that maximum greed. So I just left with 72 meter. I I'm more than good. So team has had chances to potentially build meter without me kill stealing. So that's about as greedy of a clear as I'll go for. And now everything else here is just extra. So I'll help with some of the further targets that are more annoying to deal with. So yeah, we're, lo we're looking real good. So that also means that I can volunteer to go ahead of the team and potentially kill stuff early, which is kind of nice. Equip our cannon rouge. So I'm going to face right. Don't move from start. So if you don't know the tip, you can look to the right if you have anything that hits high, like Rambling May or Frozen Shooter or pre preferably cannon rouge or a bazooka. And what will happen is that Gal Griffin will swing towards us and we get a good shot in his dumb face. <laughs> so I'm just going to face him and get ready to shoot him in his dumb face. Come here. Nice. That was a lot of damage. So your goal, if you don't have a weapon that hits it yet, go sort of towards the boss, but be ready to play tornado dodging. So I'm probably going to get wrecked by tornado here several times. Because the boss hates me. Oh, tornado, please. So I did some damage to the boss. But yeah, I was getting, I was getting hard zoned by tornado, sadly. Yeah, I clipped the boss again. So the boss might die before it really gets to do another attack. I think it's basically over. Boss is dead. And I let the boss land on me for bonus meter. That is greedy, chat. Greedy for meter. <laughs> I don't. I didn't have to take that damage, but I'm like, you know what? Let's get that meter. Easy boss kill. When you have two rangers in a party, they absolutely dumpster this boss. You do not want to see what this boss is like if you let it alone. This boss is kind of a nightmare to control with low ATP. So do not recommend unless you have two rangers with good equipment to do this quest. Otherwise, uh, I hope you have a near max level Hue cast or something to do damage fast enough. Nicely done. So now we're going to be doing a little peaceful tour of Seabed. Uh, we're coming up to a room with Rico boxes, and those Rico boxes will eventually be protected by Sinnoh Blue. So if you have Hell, it's generally not great here on the Sinnohs, but we can try to help them a little bit with some freeze traps here and there. So we're gonna try to land the freeze trap here. That way we can just delete this enemy instantly. 
Now there seems to be a Sinnoh going rogue up there, so I'm gonna shoot an- I shot the stupid Rico box. I didn't realize nobody killed the Rico box up there, that was awkward. So sadly the Rico box was closer to me than the Sinnoh, so my aim went towards that instead of my trap, but that's fine. Uh, I forget, I did bring a Hell Gun. I guess I can technically equip it now. So if you have Hell, it's recommended you equip it here. And the reason being is that if you time your shots correctly, you can one-shot this. There we go. Unfortunately, went through. Uh, if you have Rafoe, people will clear the boxes that are up there. Otherwise, it could just Hell for a little bit. Why am I missing so much Hell Chance? Him, please. Thank you. So one of us will stay near the top of the ramp. I'm going to do this to turn off the poison in the next room. Everybody else will take a hard right, and then they'll get ambushed by a Sinnoh Blue in the face. So I only need to get 8 meter between now and the end of the run. So people will sometimes get hit by these chainsaws on purpose, or more often than not it's usually by accident to be honest, but that's fine. Nice freeze trap. So I'm going to acknowledge that somebody is a Hell Needle, so I'm not going to hit the first enemies that I see. I'm going to go down the ramp instead, and I'm going to go ahead and clear these. Now the main enemy we have to kill spawns roughly in the middle where that squid just died. So if you want to help burst, potentially you can help there. But more often than not, the people with Hell will take care of that. So what I like to do in the meantime, since I have nothing better to do, I just kill these Rico Boxes. The Rico Boxes are optional. Oh, we traded blows. That's not what I wanted. Uh, I do not have a Twin Blaze on this character, so there is a specific position if you go to the right, but in front of the console, somebody can do a Gafoe to stop the charge of the monster. I can Freeze Trap, so we're all going to go in a nice little corner huddle, and I'm going to go ahead and Freeze Trap right about now. And what that'll do is that the Gafoe will stop the Del Beater from going forward, and my Freeze Trap will make it so that we can just delete everything. Now, if team wants to get extra kills, by all means, they could kill those. So take some time with it, it's fine. I'll continue onwards with our Hell Ranger here. We'll just clean up some runs. Rico boxes are mostly for PDs. They're not really worth anything too crazy. So the timing here, if you're playing without a Hell item, if you do six attacks in a row, the Sinnoh Blue will always be targetable. So I'm gonna emulate that by delaying my shot there a little bit to make sure that it's always within walking position. Sort of similarly, if if I place my uh, Freeze Trap right after that, and I walk forward, I can get the Sinnoh Blue to walk into that without me needing to shoot the trap. So those are the things that I do to save myself time, because I get bored <laughs> in RT. I'm just like, I'm going to learn these strats, chat. I will. So because I don't feel like using Hell, I'm going to choose the furthest Rico box. Uh, I'm going to leave the Ranger to clean up the Morphos in this room. I'm just going to help with clear in general. And we're going to focus on the other box. Nice level up. So if anybody goes near the door... Oh, it actually spawned early. Morphos will spawn. Just don't look at them, and you should be fine. I'm going to go on ahead, because I don't feel like dealing with them. We have a ranger and a forest. That's two people using hell. <laughs> I'll go, not my problem. I'm going to go ahead and do an optional check, because I have a cannon rouge. So there's a wall you can walk through. Uh, no other player has to do this, just this is optional if you're first in the room and the team is really split. Like, see how a team is, like, at least 8 seconds behind me? There's no sense in me going forward without the team, so what I'm gonna do is I'm- Oh, I can't shoot through there. I can tra- I can tech through there, I can't trap through- or shoot through there, that's sad. So I'm gonna pop those boxes, since that technically could give endgame items, technically. And then I just come out and deal with whatever I can see, or allegedly see, because, uh, PSO camera is special. So if I don't have meter by this point, I could just shoot the Rico boxes for more meter. Uh, but since I have meter, I'm going to go ahead and use charge to speed this up slightly. Say goodbye to the Rico box. And so now we have to dodge two sets of chainsaws. Sinnohs will spawn near the first set of chainsaws as well as the second. So what I could do since I have Frozen Shooter, I could just freeze the target as soon as I see him spawn. This Frozen Shooter is kind of broken. I can get away with just Heaven Striking, which is slightly better in some scenarios. How is he out of range? What? I've never seen that happen before. I have never seen that happen before. How did he get out of range with Freeze? That was weird. Well, anyway, if you don't have meter, walk into that repeatedly. Somebody will heal you, hopefully. Okay, so our Hell user is going to build up some meter. If you have meter, don't bother building meter there. 
I'm gonna go fix the soundtrack. Oh, wrong soundtrack. Once you have meter, we're gonna declare who's using what. Since I usually have twins, I'm just gonna say twins. So just declare dolphin. No, 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 no. Don't cop. Your goal is to not copy whatever somebody's doing. So I'm gonna twins. If you have dolphin, just use dolphin, and the other person could use angel or snake. And we should be good. So they're building meter. So this is what I was talking about before. This is the downside to hell. <laughs> it goes fast, but we lose time on that. It wasn't too bad that time, though. It wasn't too bad. So I'm gonna say using twins. Snake is snake is fine. That's even better. There we go. Snake's even better because you don't sync up with anybody. And that's all you want to do. So going forward, you could just be the dedicated snake player. <laughs> so yeah, that we actually we got there about the same time as some of our runs with Hellcleave. Just so you understand, like it it was a pretty good, pretty good pace here. Oh, I did actually did not want to start the boss battle yet, but that's fine. So what we're gonna do is we are going to walk forward. We're gonna wait for the boss to continue to spawn. Heaven Striker can hit this boss while it's off screen. I probably should have put Charge Vulcan as my top weapon option to allow for maximum damage, but because of the heat seeking shot goes off screen, I can do a lot of damage with this allure also going off screen and cheese a lot of this boss's health. Yeah, case in point. <laughs> that damage is so dumb. Like, literally before hunters are even able to target it, I did, like, almost 3,000 damage off the boss. With just a single shot landing, let alone the rest of the combo. So if you're anybody else, just stick with the group. Player 1 has to go over here. I'm gonna switch to my Charge Vulcan. Do not hit this boss until you see it look around. I repeat, do not hit this boss until you see it look around. Please do not hit this boss until you see it look around. If you're not sure, just wait. For somebody else to fire. I know there's a stream delay, but hopefully that will be the thing that we need. If I see it get hit, I'm gonna be very sad. Okay, now we can shoot. Now we kill. There we go. Clean boss fight. Good job, team. Clean. Don't have to worry about any of the boss's attacks, just mag blast it up, kaboom, done. If you have a decent team, like in terms of ATP, you're not talking best strategy or anything else. Olga Flow, ironically, is the easiest fight. <laughs> There's a lot that can go wrong in this fight. So as long as you respect it, it should be good. Got some ATP, respect, then you're good. So if you're very lucky, you're going to see something called Parasitic Gene Flow right at the center of the arena. And I recommend you go pick that up. And you do whatever you need to drop items and go pick it up. Oh, somebody got it. Who got it? Who got it? Oh, there we go. <laughs> Please pick it up. <laughs> Please pick it up. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Congrats. End game item achieved. Yeah, you're on top of the screen. Wow, there we go. That is what we call beginner's luck. Because <laughs> he does not run RT. This is one of his first. If possibly, if possibly literally actually his first. Definitely his first for ultimate. My first, nice. So anyway, treasure that one in 64 drop chance. Okay, so recommendation, don't touch it. <laughs> don't touch it for a while, put it in a bank. Hellcleave will potentially help you get items or I will try to help you get calibers for it. But basically it combines with a big sword to become the best hunter weapon in the game and you already have a gear assault from earlier so you should have everything that you need to basically do all the end game hunter runs so if you look at when we did i think i did some ttf as hunter i don't know if i labeled them as hunter but maybe i'll do a separate one where i showcase it again um but yeah knowing the timings and stuff like that is kind of important i'm actually just gonna permanently unequip my v502 i don't think i need it with this team i don't need it I think I'd rather benefit from that ATP for the clear. So there you go. Now if you get a second one, <laughs> if you get a second one, I'm not gonna lie, it will tilt probably everybody. <laughs> the tilt will be real. 
We just see Django log off, I log off. <laughs> it's just, it's over. GG. <laughs> Run, runs are done for the day. Closing up shop. Oh, actually. Uh, does it matter if I make the I'll let make Django make the game again, actually. Blue ID is kind of nice. I want that V501 off chance. I feel like at this point, remote battery will end up with that V501. <laughs> which will enable him to basically do as many status ailments as he wants, which is kind of cru crucial for some areas. There we go. So yeah, now that I have heavenly, heavenly Power in, I will be scaling a lot better with that Chip to D band. I forgot to equip that right at the end, sadly. Because I was using V502 briefly in Seabed, but I should have equipped it for the boss. But it just goes to show, you don't need to be at max ATP to delete everything. Switching off hack, maybe. Maxi says, I missed it, what dropped? Uh, parasitic Gene Flow for Remote Battery. What are you talking to turn, uh, turn in the quest? There's the counter lady and the initial area that you teleport to. Then the person to the left of her, if you're facing her, is the person that says, congratulations, you got an SS rank, blah, blah, blah. And then you return to the quest two counter, just the counter that we're at currently. So yeah, congratulations. I was gonna say, Dango, if it drops for me, I'm I'm giving it to you, Dango. I want you to know. <laughs> you you have more than earned it at this point. It is dodging you for some reason. Dango, it will go. I'll, I'll just mysteriously be like, oops, look at the new quest counter reward. No, Dango's been hunting for a while. <laughs> Don't poke Dango on that. Poor Dango. Okay, so we're done with that soundtrack. Let's go to this one. So yeah, we'll do at least two more. Maybe two more on a TTF to finish or something. Because I, I definitely do not want to be going past 8 o'clock. I think 7.30, whatever quest we're on, is whatever quest we're on. Oh, I missed what Dango said. Let's see what Dango replied with. I know take must trade. Fair. It also, if he somehow hits 200, I will give up the one that is in my bank because I have been sitting on one for a while. Since I have one dark flow, and that's good enough for me for now. I'm saving it for potentially a special caliber, because I have been doing box runs. So in theory, it could happen. I'm just gonna do box checks. I don't care about killing these enemies. Or he'll fight me and block me. Cool. What a jerk. So yeah, I do the box checks because I have, as I said before, I have gotten barriers from this, but sadly it is blue ID, so I don't think it is anything interesting on uh, Temple. Actually, this is also one of the things we were talking about before that I was surprised about. I don't know if the team knew this or not. This does not count as Temple 2, by the way, or Temple Beta or whatever it's called. So for the box rares, we were getting temple alpha drops. So even though this leads to the boss, it's still technically considered temple alpha, which I did not know. But based off of the rares, that's the only way that could be true. Rip the lilies. So if there's anybody else that wants to join in, please let us know. We'll try to give at least one more rotation in a little bit. Otherwise, we are smooth sailing through everything. Hey, 830 health. TTF just becoming easier and easier. Slowly getting out of the falls kill range with swipes. Maybe surviving elemental damage. If resistance is banned. The dog bark and the cat meow. That is a choice for a song. 
Uh, I think we mentioned it was about 840, I think. You're, you're like a level from it. I'll put it that way. You're really not that far. In single player, you're way above it. We'll, we'll double check again. I always forget. It is... Oh, I'm sorry. It's 812. So never mind. You passed it already. Congratulations. You no longer died to the swipes. I heard a rare drop, but it didn't show up on the... Oh, it's double technique, of course. Stupid double technique. Oh, actually, that reminds me. Uh, if you're playing a force... Are you planning to play a force remote battery? Devil technique is actually decent for forces while you're leveling. It's a great item to put on when you're capped MST as well. It's preferable to have just one god technique later, but even just a devil technique is pretty good. Okay, I'll give you a devil technique. Technically, you can make, like, a super technique with it. So even if you don't find it useful by itself, you could humor yourselves with Claire's deal 5 later if you want. I'll keep it held until the end of the run, so that way you don't have to worry about item management. But it is funny that devil technique does not pop up on the rare detector. <laughs> it's like, that is a forbidden item. Okay, so if we're lucky, it's going to spawn on the right side. If we're unlucky, it goes above us. Where's it going to go? Oh, glitch teleport. There we go. Got an extra shot because of that. Lucky. And now I get more shots here, too. Just more damage overall. Yeah, just a lot of damage to this boss preemptively. So I think we pop most of its plates, which is good. So I'm going to go hide in the corner again. So I like to do this, by the way, because if I have Bazooka, one normal strike always lines up with the paralysis thing. And it's, it's not even RNG. It's so good how how well this times and spaces. Because if I always face the corner and then walk away from it, I'm always going to be at the right angle. It's so disgusting, like, how good it is. Like, I could bounce off the corner there. Oops. The other thing moved me out of position. Unfortunate. So we're doing a million damage to this thing. Goodbye. Boss is dead. Double Cannon Rouge equals double disgusting. Okay, let's play the lineup Olympics. So we'll wait for the box clear. Oh, this is another good opportunity if you're playing Hunter and you have Gearsol. You could drain your health to uh, use Dark Flow for future reference. But anyway, okay, lineup Olympics. Uh... I think that's... Is that right? Oh no, I'm downing the, the bolts. I think that I think that was fine. I shouldn't have moved. Alright, that, that's better. I like that one better. Thank you for following Supersonic540. Hopefully you're doing well today. We're attempting to win the lineup Olympics. Who will be moving in a straight line? It does not need to move to leave this raft. I'm pretty close to centered, I think, but is my angle good? Ooh, angle's looking a little off. Oh, but I still qualify. Nice. So I didn't hit a dead center. Nobody got a dead center. Good, good try, team. Also, I'm so used to being player one, I actually legitimately forgot where the switch was. <laughs> I'm just used to it being in front of me, and I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute, there's players in front of me. That's not correct. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, luck material? I mean, okay. You know, I, I haven't gotten the Parasite of Gene Flow in a while here, but PD luck material on just like four enemies? I'll take that. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, Confuse Trap slash Freeze Trap this area. I'm gonna go ahead and deal with this. All right, so let's try to time this a little better. So what I need to do, if I set up a freeze trap, I can freeze the pan arm and hit the dub switch switch, but I need to practice it. So somebody will trigger it. Then I'm going to go like here, and then I'm going to do this. Yeah, did it. 
It's such a dumb thing. I, I, Chad, I have nothing better to do in episode two. I gotta find ways to amuse myself. It's like, how often are you gonna say you shot a trap that hit a dump switch that froze the key target? Almost never. I'll let Chad kill that. The claps, yeah. <laughs> it's so dumb. Speaking of dumb, time to... Do I even bother hitting these enemies for PDs? Maybe? Maybe I hit them for PDs? You know what, I'll hit them for PDs. Get some XP at least. Anyway, back to Charge Vulcan. Yeah, that seemed fair. What a life a rock has lives. They do whatever they want. Okay. Hold on. Check my mag and synchro. Ooh, it's not great. We'll, we'll feed it one item. Oh, there we go. Manipulate the RNG. <laughs> I just wanted invincibility. I'm like, listen. I'll feed it the other two startup atomizers later. I'm like, wake up, Mag. It's time to buff me. Oh, wait, wrong person. Never mind. That's fine. Actually, you know what? This is good. You want to know why that's good? Because I built more meter, so that way I don't have to lose time at Chainsaw later. We'll take this. Yeah, that's it. Keep hitting me. That's fine. I think I want to burst. Uh, Can of Rouge once. Oh, come on, land, land and hit me? Yeah, 64 meter. Perfect. So I already have as much meter as I need, so I could just afford to do whatever I want here. Nice, getting hit by the dragon on the way down. Classy way to build meter. Love it. I just want you to know, it's all on purpose. We need to hit 100 meter. So we're finding, like, dumb ways to save time on this quest. Oh, I didn't need to go for that box. So this is I have time. Let's go feed. How oh, is that not in? Camera angle, please. Oh, well. So our only goal is to exit here at about 65 meter. So I could literally held everything now if I wanted to. So we're talking about before ways to optimize the run. If I had S ranks, I would be more inclined to L this area. But we're gonna let our force friends do whatever they want. But basically, we kill in a three hit combo. I could just Heaven Striker. Well, would that save me time? Not really. Uh, whatever. We'll take the damage. Meter building. Yeah, build me meter. Do it. Oh, didn't get it. Wait, what's that red bullet? <laughs> I'm just like, wait a minute. What was that? Is that like red Scorpio? Not a not a projectile that I'm used to seeing for sure. Oh, yeah, we'll just wait for the next spawn. Yeah, our free traps don't matter at all in this quest. Only maybe the Delbita room and Sinnohs. That's about it. Everything else should just die too quickly for it to matter. Sadly. Nice. Like to see that. So we stay near the middle here because we know that uh, when it's the group of six keys, it's always triple Marilla. And that's like the only Marilla spawn I've memorized. <laughs> so I just make sure I'm roughly in the center, even if I don't vocalize it. It's because I want to make sure they stand up as quickly as possible and we don't lose time. After that, it's like a mad dash of who goes where. Is that maybe it's Ruby Bullet? Maybe that's what that is. My brain is cycling through projectiles. I think that was Ruby Bullet. <laughs> that feels maximum disrespect. <laughs> nice. There we go. I figured it out eventually. Mystery solved. So anyway, I don't need to greed clear here, so I think I'll do the clear normally. So I'm going to let the team go through the main areas. The reason I want to go over here on blue ID is the B501. Also a couple of box checks. So, for example, I should probably enter the room if I want to not greed clear this. I could time my freeze trap a little better, so that way I don't have to shoot it. But most of the time he dies for the time for accuracy actually mattering. Like, the freeze trap will self-detonate pretty much no matter what. 
Uh, I think I could cheese him with this. This should be fine. Yeah. So that way I can line up for the shot, but not worry about the trap. I mean, I could trap shoot, but I just don't like doing that with Vulcan. Vulcan can be kind of weird sometimes. Nice. Yeah, we're talking about before, like, optimizing hell usage. So, like, we'll purposely get hit on bosses all the time. <laughs> like, like a lot of people won't even dodge the poison stuff from the worm boss just because they have time to cure themselves later. <laughs> like, just anything to build meter faster so that they don't have to stand at the chainsaws. Like, that's how you know how desperate we are to build that meter. So I'm at 82, which is hilarious. So if I had a hell needle, I would absolutely use it for the rest of the run. And that would save me time, for sure. So basically, you want to be within, like, three chainsaws worth of uh, building PB without losing it. If you're looking to do a three-man, that is. Full time blast. Nice. Okay, time to get trolled hard by Gal Griffin here, I feel. So as long as at least one ranger is untornadoed, we should be doing good damage here. To try to dodge, getting trolled. Unfortunate, slightly out of range. Really unfortunate, it's backing up full screen. Come back to me. Okay, we chipped it out most of the way, which is fine. We just want to make sure it lands with like less than 2000 health. Did we get a couple shots here? It should probably die. And then we took the crash damage, because we could. <laughs> so we're now at 90 meter, so that would be the equivalency of basically 27 Vulcan combos. Vulcan hits, that is. Like a normal heavy heavy combo. I think I got stuck in the boxes. I had to clear those. So make sure we pop that far box, even though it's a little less valuable, because in theory it could have a PD. Uh, but mostly as long as you see those weapon crates, those are the only mandatory ones to open. Armor, for the most part, I don't bother with, but the fact that it could end up being a quite ridiculous uh, caliber or just like a high hit ray gun, there's like decent odds of them to appear on this area, so it's worth opening those boxes. And definitely now that we're in Seabed, it's more than worth opening those boxes. So you'll see us do a lot of optional checks to check those. So here's an example where I know I don't need to build meter, so I'm going to use charge here instead of just doing normal heavy heavy. Speed up the clear slightly. That way we could do stuff like that. Oh, I did my instant trap freeze, but he wasn't close enough. So sad. Oh, he's teleporting again. Alright, chat got him. being shot by the other one. Oh, that is so sad. Yeah, just be careful. If you don't have hell and you go in that hallway first, that other Morphos will probably hit the other players. Be warned about that. It's not end of the world, but just be aware. Because we have to walk forward into the room at some point. All right, let me turn this off. This is optional. This is quality of life. No poison room. So far, I haven't seen anybody get any items up there, which is great, because I barely remember how to get up there. <laughs> I'm going to be like, you're on your own to get those four items. I have no idea. I've gone up there, I think, once in 400-something runs. Oh, there's the Sinnoh. Dango remembers. Maybe we'll have Dango show us next run. He'll be like, humor me, Dango. Where do we go? Put a freeze trap there. Why not? another freeze trap down why not see it did something now it's even easier to hell because I'm using charge Vulcan here with charge I just get extra kills while I'm waiting because I'm not gonna bother killing Sinnoh's elves the red Sinnoh's die very quickly to hell so me get and hell users will just have a big advantage so I want to make sure as a cast I'm never the first one in unless I have a Twin Blaze, but because I do not, I'm just going to come over in the corner. I'm going to put down a little Happy Freeze Trap. 
I don't even have to time it. You saw that I put two there just in case. It'll detonate when it's ready. I could learn to trap shoot time it, but I could just be facing the enemy and not even need to trap shoot. And that's my philosophy. It runs like TTF and RT. I'm like, listen, the less I have to instant trap shoot, the better. I only want to do that in like super difficult runs. I'm going to wait a little bit since I'm going to recognize I'm not the fastest. I'm going to put a freeze trap out here and shoot it. Or not. I missed. Missed the line. I still got my target though. I knew where he was. So if I throw another one here, I have to be ready to dodge. They put a bomb where I was dodging. That was that was actually rude. Actually rude. Please get them off of me. I'm stuck in place for so long with Vulcan. I have no chance of dodging. I'll kill these at least. I'll let team kill the other Rico box. I basically want to be the first one to explore. Since I'm not going to be using Hell, I'm going to be using Charge. So I'm going to go for the furthest Rico box here again. And then I'm going to go for the one in the upper left, and then I'm just going to wait to leave the room. So we're just going to do normal heavy heavy, or special special I guess. I guess I get heavy special special, but I think normal special special is good enough. So I'm looking to just leave the room. I'm just, as long as I don't look at the rest of the room, we're fine. So as long as they kill the Rico box, we're good. Fine, I will shoot the Morphos to death if I need to. There we go, I've shot the Morphos to death. Rip Morphos. I'm gonna dodge the laser barrier because that makes it harder for the team to clear. So yeah, so team will basically congregate in the middle. There's two Sinnohs that appear around the fake wall. Ooh, fortunate. Uh, yeah, that's fine, it happens. So, I will put a very delayed freeze trap. Maybe this will go off in time? Maybe. They take forever to spawn normally. Yeah, so sadly, my tech, since I don't have techs, I can't shoot those without entering the room because of the way the, the room is coded. Oops, rip player. I found the Sinnoh. I'm gonna go ahead and special, special, special. I just want them out of here. So I'm at 100 meter, I don't need to do anything special. The only thing I need to do is wait a little bit for the team to make sure we're vaguely in sync. So that way I'm not like spawning them where they can't handle them. And I think I'm actually just gonna use Heaven Striker this time. Yeah, much better. So I'm at 100 meter, which is perfect. So we're coming in around the time that we were clearing last time. So it should be good here. It looks like everybody has it. Look at that, time saved. Nicely done, team. Time save. Our goal is to be mag blasting before 2030, ideally. Uh, usually at like 21 minutes or like 2015 or so is if we had like a lot of hell users. So the fact that we still used hell and we're still gonna be we're gonna be done with the mag blast before 21 minutes is huge. That saves a ton of time. So anyway, we're gonna go for the Heaven Striker strat. So we're gonna believe in Heaven Striker. Come on, auto attack, hit the skies. <laughs> Otherwise, if you got a charge Vulcan, I would recommend using it. Here comes the boss. So if we're very lucky, I'm gonna land like three or four of them in a row. Now I forgot again to sort my items so that charge Vulcan was always at the top, or vices, whatever my character's using at the time. But this still does a lot of damage. Oh, that's big damage. Oh, that was so good. The Heaven Striker times two with Zalor. That boss was at 50% before it was targetable by Hunter. Stupid. <laughs> that boss is... That, that weapon is stupid. So overpowered. Just shake your head, chat. Like, actually, God's here. I guess player 2 can also touch the orb. I'm so used to doing the orb, it didn't even occur to me that I'm not player 1 again. So I'm going to switch to Vulcan here, just so I can get more hits total. So we're going to wait. Time to die. Easy. What a good, simple, clean win. Goodbye. 
see how that, so the true RT is not optimizing how much damage you do, it's optimizing how much damage you take. <laughs> Just to ensure you get that mag blast sooner. <laughs> so silly. With purely endgame players, it's possible to just get away with uh, like raw moral and three three raw casts or some nonsense. Shooting up into the sky with super buffs, all heaven strikers, and that boss dies before it's ever targetable. Like parallel for hunter that is. Level ups for everybody, but no PSG. We'll do at least one more. So close. Yeah, nice run. It's gonna say Robo Battery is gonna play later with all these new levels and be like, wow, this is much easier now. <laughs> what was I ever doing before? Red Ring next? Maybe. So I, I, I think I have enough time to do one more RT into a TTF. So this will be the last one. I'll probably make it on yellow, just to mix it up a little. Give Dango some time to swap if he wants. Equipment somewhere else for TTF in the future. Yeah, the raw cast is here. The clear is ready. So I'm gonna be out of here. I'm gonna make the game super fast. I got nothing I wanna get from the shops. Let us go ahead and make a game. Nicely done. This character will get a level up, which is not needed. He doesn't need them anymore, but it's it's fun to get them, I guess. So yeah, yellow ID gets basically everything good still. They just get them in slightly different areas. So like, the robot check is a little worse in Seaside, but as I said before, the box rares are super good throughout. So technically, there are some insane drops throughout. Like Seabed Upper, for example, is at slot amplifier of red, which is okay. Seabed Lower kind of sucks. Seaside gives blue barrier, which is potentially really good. And then Spaceship, there's sadly nothing to kill there for red barrier at slot, which is a bit disappointing. But yeah, this is a pretty good... Uh, Pretty good selection for RT if you're looking for box rares while still looking to do valid runs. It still gets great things like Zamba, of course. And Galatine is always a plus. Figured the lead priest trap there would be amusing. Yeah, melee me. Yeah, you showed me. Darn, I got meter. What a shame. <laughs> right, chat? Oh, oh darn. Oh, I gotta go back for that power material, actually. That's an oh darn. So now the box checks are super good in temple. So there's three that we check there, then there's gonna be four in the back here. If we're really lucky, it's gonna be red, red barrier, exactly. Oh darn, just shucks, golly gee. Got hit for damage, what am I gonna do? I swear, the box, the box checks in yellow ID are just better. Shoot it, get luck material. I mean, how often do you get luck material from a box chat? Think about that. <laughs> just like, okay. I'll take it. It's just not what I was looking for, but a little pleasant surprise either way. We'll freeze those targets because it's funny. Guess I should in theory charge arm, but with the S needle, I'm not going to get a big chance to do much. So much freeze going on. This is brutal. Oh, that was like slightly too early. I had the right idea though. So that's what I'm talking about, where, where I can set up a freeze trap without needing to shoot it. <laughs> it's where I want to do it. There are a couple of rooms where there's definitely room for improvement. So every time I play RT, I try to try something just a little bit different. I don't try to mimic exactly what I'm doing each time. So I like to experiment.
Yeah, I think, for example... I think there's just some rooms in C or not Seaside, in uh, Seabed, excuse me, that I think are just worth helling. Like, definitely, like, it's not worth melee, Morphos, but I'm definitely very pro ATP in this quest. Unless everybody is just agreeing not to go for Magblast, in which case, hell is definitely faster. But I just feel like with the clear speed, it's just, oh, it's so good. I like that there's even boxes here. Like, there's even... There's just, like, a, just enough boxes to do that little yellow ID check without going too far out of your way. So good. I gotta get further down the room, I think, so I can deal with the Rappi. Oops. I didn't expect to actually kill in a normal heavy. I think they got the Lord. Wait a little bit. Freeze trap. Got him. It's quality of life freeze traps. Like, are they needed? No. Is it amusing when they land? Absolutely. I'm gonna reposition into a freeze trap here. That should deal with the Lily as well. Ooh, 3084 is the good version of Flow and Sword. If you got hit percentage on that, that's actually a good drop slash pickup for remote battery. Just FYI, that is one of the boss killer options. Or worm, specifically. Oh, Cannon Rouge. My bad. I cost the team time there. No hit, that's a shame. Speaking of a shame, uh let's let's have a let's have a rip in the chat for my monster reader. I guess I'm going vanilla here. That's what that pause was. It was not laptop related. The, the add-on died. Farewell, brave soul. You told me exactly what percentages I needed earlier. So now I'm just going blind into the boss, which is fine. Uh, so what we're going to do, we're going to go to the far corner of the wrath. This I will not change. I'm convinced this is the best strategy to do. I have not been convinced otherwise. I'm always lined up for the paralysis thing. Because look at where I'm lined up and then look what happens when I'm normal. Nope. All right, we'll take damage. Go ahead, hit me. Yeah, build me meter. Yeah, you showed me. That one's a little trickier to time correctly. Everything else is fun. I'm gonna do as many cannon rouges here as I can. There we go, nice and easy. Okay, line up Olympics. The final line, all, line up Olympics for the night, for me at least. Leveled up. That's it. Remote battery. Okay. Go for it, go for it. Uh, ooh, I don't like, ooh, I didn't, I didn't stick the landing. We'll try again, we'll try again. We're gonna go over here. We're gonna come over here to where the force is. Ooh, ooh, I didn't like that. I don't like that. I'm gonna go for it again. Ooh, I'm really not liking my camera. Camera, please. Come on, line up dead center. I still got time. Line up Olympics is very silly. Oh, there we go. That that felt beautiful. That was perfect. We're good. <laughs> I haven't lost any time yet. <laughs> so we're gonna hold forward. We're gonna see how lined up we are. That felt dead centered. Oh, look at that. Oh, de multiple people getting dead center. Ooh, everybody's a winner that got the dead center. That was good. Okay, time to troll with the Cannon Rouge, I guess. Yeah, and I'm sure uh, Remote Battery will enjoy the power level difference. Oops. Of the earlier TTF compared to this TTF. Should feel a definitely big quality of life when it comes to surviving hits. So you're slowly getting out of fire range if you don't have fire resist. Ice, you might be in a little bit of trouble. RT seems better loot-wise. Uh, we're, we're getting unlucky. TTF has some fantastic drops. They're just rare. V101s, Excaliburs, Absolute Shenanigans. Freeze Trap here. Oh, nobody was there to spawn the Pan Arms. 
I did hit my freeze trap to kill the Dupchicks, though. That I did correctly. That's so sad. I could have walked into the center first, then freeze trap. That would have been my correction. Oh, well, speaking of corrections, let's see if I can uh, kill the Del Saber with a freeze trap shot. so good chat come on that's beautiful <laughs> see that's trolling i trolled the del saber it jumped at me i put freeze trap behind me shot the wall hit the freeze trap gg <laughs> so dumb i love that so much this is the only thing that makes me smile on episode two i'm telling you dumb stuff like that where i can amuse myself with uh spacing does it save time maybe <laughs> Put that with the question mark. Oh, speaking of which. Consoles. Bend my mag a little more. Manipulate the RNG. Maybe it'll love me more. Oof. No love. No love for mag. Well, I guess depending on which one it is, I'll walk into it. Electric shock might be more hassle than it's worth. Let's see. Of course. Yeah, that one does silly damage. I don't know why. But on the plus side, I have all the meter that I need. So now if I really wanted to do my health strategy, it's good. Yeah, I'm already at 64 meter due to walking into it. Maybe the strat is actually to unequip that boss invincibility. Maybe I've been thinking about it all wrong. Just get zapped on purpose at high health. Oh yeah, double hit me. Oh, hit me again. Fall on me. Come on, do it. Do it. Yeah, there we go. Squeezing the meter out, chat. <laughs> okay, I should probably walk towards the uh, the boxes with weapons. Perfect. 70 meter before I even enter the boss fight. Mm. Maybe that's the trick. Maybe you actually just genuinely don't want boss invincibility in RT. I've been thinking about it wrong this whole time. But now that we're talking about the meter, this is the evolution of thought. Maybe I should be bringing in, like, shift to D-band mags. Rest the mags. <laughs> Strike your unit's time. Hashtag rise up. Oh, I didn't expect that to kill. Yeah, I mean, I'm already at 77 meter. That is disgusting. I mean, obviously when I'm lower level, I want to dodge it, but now that I'm like this playing as the 180 behemoth as opposed to like the 130 squishy, maybe that's the strategy. I don't know where the exact cutoff is. Like, I will only do this when my resistance is 30 with 1200 health or something like that. Because 1700 was excessive. I definitely don't think I need that much. And obviously I need a soul atomizer, of course, too. Ooh, out of range by one shot. Sad. Okay, let's move towards the center-ish. I know there's going to be geese that come down. There we go. So even if I can't see where they are, because we no longer have the monster reader, I do know that once these three die, I have to be in the center. Let's go towards the center. There we go. Exactly what I wanted. Freeze them, stop them from running. Let the team get the kills. Go up here to make the Marillas fight me. In case the team doesn't kill it, I got the freeze trap. Ooh, testing my memory of the geese spawns. I'm so used to seeing them on the right side. It's not something I've had to memorize before. Ooh, photon drop. Uh, I think I need to move further down. Yeah, I need to be, like, here for the game. Oh, that's such a good clear. I guess I could still do the side check. It's not worth as much, because there's sadly no V501 from Blue ID, but it is technically still three box checks, and it's not super low-end boxes either. They're, they're kind of worth checking. Sort of. Team can also clear the boxes that are at the far end, for example. I'm gonna purposely not shoot him for a second. 
How did that not kill? Moment of sadness, chat. I think I missed that by like literally like 10 health or less. That was kind of bad. So we're gonna put two free straps here. I'm gonna let him come towards me. There we go. That time it killed. I guess that was just bad weapon RNG rolls. We kind of time it so that we're able to assist the ones that spawn near us. Which is kind of neat about that little hideaway. That way the team doesn't have to come uphill as much because I'm here to kill at least two of them. And then they pop the boxes over there. Excellent. Now it is Cannon Rouge Clock. Wow, I'm entering this at 91 meter. This is the most meter I've ever entered with before. I'm gonna I'm gonna potentially hit 100 meter before I even get into seabed. That's crazy. That dragon was uh, multi stacking that damage on me so good. <laughs> so even though shock did do damage to us. It wasn't an amount that dissuaded me. Freeze can also be problematic, just because it can stack really quick, because I have no iframes. Oh, that's also a good way to build meter. Although that's very risky for raw cast. That will kill me more often than not, which is not worth the time loss. I heard somebody get mag blast just now. For forces, it's funny. They almost never get knocked down by it. Okay, I just got my blast. I have invulnerability now. Oh, music done. We'll fix it in a moment. It's more important that I kill Gal Griffin. So the boss landed and died, as per usual. That's what I want to see. About as optimal as it can get. So let's see what we got. Potentially could get a Galatine here. That would be exciting for players. Nice leveled up. Does not seem like anybody got a Galatine. That's a shame. Galatine, of course, being a fantastic endgame option for most classes to hold in order to delete Volt Op. And even being used as a beat stick for characters with spirit capabilities is kind of nice. So sometimes you'll see one with high hit used on Omar. But it has to be pretty high hit. It's not bad for other characters, of course, just because it does so much single target damage. Hmm. We're going in a bit blind here for the Sinnoh's timings. So it's going to be based off of memory. So I think if I freeze trap now and then shoot, he should get frozen. Yeah. It's about right. I remember my scam 30 hit banner. Oof. I'm gonna wait a little bit so chat catches up with me a bit more. I feel like that's the play thing to do. So what I'm gonna do here actually, pro tip, ignore them. <laughs> Dango says here's the hidden path. Oh, it's back there. I didn't see where you were. Let me check on the map where you are. Walk walk and show me after this Dango. I'm gonna go back to you. Where is Dango? Oh, is it's in that room, really? I did not know that. Interesting. Uh, oh, mines, please. Okay. That's all I wanted to see. We don't have to go back there. There's no items of interest for me there. Good to know. Of course it's a fake wall. Of course it is. So anyway, I'm going to make sure the switch is hit because I didn't hit it. So I'm just going to double check. Yep. <laughs> Had a feeling. So sadly, we can't use telepipes here, so it is... We do lose time if we have to take the secret path. But again, it so rarely comes up. Even though there are, like, it's... I think it's almost guaranteed weapons. Maybe it is guaranteed weapons. But I have almost never seen anything there of worth, sadly. So anyway, we're gonna go ahead and just do a drive-by freeze trap kind of deal. So the worst thing that happens is he tries to walk behind me and just gets frozen. I can kill these for PD chances. I got nothing better to do. I don't want to be first in the next area regardless anyway. 
Dango committed to that chainsaw for PB. Chainsaw said no. So yeah, we don't want to be first in the room just because we don't have Gafoe. Otherwise, we just spam freeze traps. It'll get frozen eventually. See that? <laughs> we don't even have to have any timing. Like, who cares? We have so many freeze traps. I mean, I've been using them constantly. I'm still at 7 somehow. It's crazy. Teammates be confirmed. Oof. Damage is high. We know the Sinnoh is coming, so I'm going to go ahead and put down a little happy freeze trap. Oh, they shot the Sinnoh before it could come over here. That's unfortunate. So I'm going to have to use my body as bait. There we go. Body as bait. I'm going to bait the other one by doing this. <laughs> or the Rico kills me. Wow. Wow. That was really cheap. That was really cheap. Wow. I got instantly stun killed by the Rico, by the way. It put the buzzsaw out right as I wanted to do it. That was so unfortunate. To those wondering why I don't like high HP, I want you to clip that. <laughs> to understand that that stupid robot did literally thousands to me instantly. I stood no chance. So sad. If you have too much HP, you don't get knocked down. So therefore, if it buzzsaws you, it hits you like 30 times and you die. So if you're wondering what killed me, it was just Buzzsaw. This thing is like a Baranz. It will just delete high HP players for no reason. Even though it should be fairly easy to deal with, it is more hassle than it should be. Oh well. So we got a bit of a minute left to clear. So we're about on target. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, the Sinnohs were pulled a little awkwardly, so they didn't fall right away. That's the downside if you're not first in the room. That can happen. Because normally, if you, like, for example, if you're the only person in the room, they will always line up with the pillar. They will always walk into the pillar. They will always be frozen. You can even use Rebarda to punish them through the wall. You don't have to time it or anything. Just know if you'd ATP kill the Rico boxes, they will be there, as long as you have not done any crazy movement to go to that pillar that is. I'll let team kill the Rico boxes. Hmm. I'm gonna feel in my heart where the Sinnoh is. Oh, I'm what I want. Okay. So it's like right about here. Yeah. Hit that Sinnoh. Look at that, Chad. I'm learning RT. So I'm good. I don't need meter. So we did lose a little bit of time there. I think some of that was... I don't know where we lost time, honestly. I Oh, because we went back to uh, check the other room. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. We did lose time from that. But we're still here pretty quickly. There we go. So even with checking out the side detour where we had two people missing in the party, we still outsped a three-person hell team, so do with that do with that as you will. And then we are gonna hilariously murder this thing with Hell Heaven Strikers. Let's well call it Hell Striker, let's be real. Man, and it's so good on Ramar and Ramarl because they have such high ATA for landing it too. So they don't even need like high hit percentage. I have a hit percentage one, so I'm kind of like a Ramarl and ATA. So that's why I'm landing it somewhat consistently. It's so good. Otherwise, normally I would say it's probably not worth doing as a raw cast. It's 100% worth doing as raw cast seal. 
but I have a 25% hit Heaven Striker, so I, I will be hitting those shots. <laughs> so I, I have the equivalency of 249 ATA, which is really good. And considering Ramar can hit it all zeroed, that's all you're really looking to do. Just always compare against Ramar, then it makes sense. A little bit, wait a little bit. Punish. Goodbye. So there we go, final RT of the night for me. We'll do a TTF afterwards. Good job, team. Good clears. Still on TTF? No, we're, uh, we were doing RT for a while. We're gonna do one TTF after this. Boom. Done. TTF to end the stream, of course. There we go. I'm worshipping, uh, Scythe there. <laughs> Remote battery not impressed. Dango trying to reach out to grab the Parasite Gene Flow. All about to end, yeah. We're right near the end. Oh, no gene flow for anybody. I guess I'll pick up the pity cash. Uh... Take this gift off. So I'll drop a devil technique for remote battery for his future force. It's not as good as the god technique, so if you get it from a Corrin Gamble, you replace it, or if you're planning on doing Claire's deal to upgrade it for four ranks. Technically, that could be useful. Yeah. Uh, we'll do two TTFs, actually. I'm looking at the time. We cleared it pretty quickly. Gonna leave the double technique over here. Right near the checker. I think I'm gonna put away for later. Probably these. Ooh, capped on PDs again. Every time, chat. <laughs> Every time I do trains to lower it, it's like, nope. Capped again. It's a good problem to have, though, I will say. Oh, did we? Oh, the song broke. Okay, are there anything other than four second songs? One second. Ooh, I'm not liking this. There's a lot of like 10 second songs in a row. I'm gonna skip through some of the soundtrack to avoid that. Okay, so... I guess the question is, what OID do we do for TTF? Do we do... I mean, we did a lot of Sky ID today already. Do I really do it again? I could bring in... My Ramar? Uh... Actually, I'll just go Hue cast. That's probably fun. I was thinking about if I wanted to get more V101 chances, but... Not really. Yeah, we should be fine with like medium buffs if Ramarl's joining us. Otherwise, it'll be uh, Humar plus Ramar holding the fort with the buffs, which would be kind of funny. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> the oh please, the please let us beat the run mode. Okay, we'll do one, see how it feels. Yeah, we got everything we need to slow the monitors down. I guess who's on monitor duty with me is the only question I need to know. I mean, I'm gonna twin blaze it. I guess the raw moral with maybe spread needle or gazond. Assuming no twin blaze from Dengo. It's a great pickup, by the way. We gotta get you one of those. It's fun. You can twirly stick everything from existence. The track is unlocked. Sure, sure. I 
do angry stomps. <laughs> Ooh, I like that one. <laughs> Just flexing on everybody. Oh, C is like, come over here. Oh, I get it. There we go. I just threaten people, apparently. J for jump. Makes sense. H for hello. I guess that's a buy? Like a wave buy? It still looks like over here. And you have awkward. Explore in the emotes. Oh, there we go. Awkward dance. Okay, let's see how we do. I think with Ramar buffs and or Ram Moral buffs and debuffs, we should probably be fine. We have three really strong ATP characters. And we're gonna help carry remote battery a little bit. There we go. Nice and simple. So let's do the box check here. Uh no PDs. I forgot to go hand in my monster reader, but fortunately we did this run earlier, so I think I mostly know the numbers. The downside is I can't see how much hit points the other enemies have, which does make me a bit sad. Goodbye, my health bar. I sacrifice you to the great Disco, brave man. Ooh. Now that was a fast clear. Yeah, so fortunately I, I know... <laughs> I was gonna say, I could, I could definitely make the dragon stop from taking play. But uh, with the ranger, I have no concerns. Say GG to, the, to this sad, sad boss. Let's see, 481,000. Okay, I'll get pretty close. I got invincibility, so I don't have to be too concerned about the head killing me. Which has happened many times before. So I think even without Zalora, this boss is just hosed. I think we just have too much ATP with our whole team. Oh, well now with Zalora, it's definitely hosed. Okay, so we're gonna try to time our combo here, so we're gonna go... One? Two. I got two attacks out and it died on the second hit, so that's fair. So yeah, we definitely need to make sure that we shoot a little earlier. Potentially get one or two or three bullets, depending on our timing. Uh, more on the dragon. Uh, photon drop, nice. I'm gonna take some safety heals. I'm gonna go activate the other thing. I'm gonna slime dupe. But I'm gonna make sure I don't lose the team that much time because I'm going to be going straight for the objective. But if the team wants to try slime duping, that's up to them. I'm just gonna come through here first. One, two, three. Oh, the trap was in the middle. Rip. So the spawn point for the... What's it called? The slime is kind of in the middle of the room. So if a fire trap is there, it kills them instantly. Which is not a bad thing to do if you don't want to slime dupe and you just want to kill them quickly. So I'm not like... I'm not torn up about it. It was just free XP we got. I'm going to go slime dupe. Good luck, team. I should be roughly in position to telepipe for the team. As long as I keep running. One, two, three. It's time to slime dude. My favorite minigame. How many slimes can you make? So much experience. By the time they do it, I should be basically touching the door when it dies. I sadly can't see when the Volmer spawns, but it has to be within a couple seconds. Yeah. So I'm in the perfect position, I got free kills, I aided to the team's experience. I will probably die mate so I don't die. <laughs> Regen HP. Oh, I got invincibility, so I actually get to disco the worm boss for a little extra. So I might as well take advantage. We got Jaya, because I believe in deleting the boss.
There we go. Big swings. Goodbye, my money. Rest in peace. I'm gonna make sure to collect money as I go through, since I did use a lot of money on that. So I'm gonna go for the slightly slower triple Confuse Trap route. Just to guarantee that these things die. We're gonna keep walking forward. Now I stop moving. GG. Maybe we'll get kills. I can't tell. But with Zalora there, they probably will die. At least one of them. hitting me here doesn't really matter. Okay, I'm not first in the room, so might as well clear a couple. Ah, too late. Alright, time to move. <laughs> I can usually kill about two before I need to worry about anything. No! Freeze trap! No! It's too soon. That wasn't me. <laughs> I was like, no! I was trying to shoot him on the way down. I got trolled. I think team is in there. I'm gonna go ahead and delete these poor Varans. I love that I can still combo kill them with level 20. That's so dumb. I love it. Good try mate here. Don't have to. Is, is Dango angry fisting them? What is happening? I'm watching this absurd melee combo unfold in front of me. Dango's like, I've had enough. is for disrespect and humor. <laughs> oh, God hand. Nice. I'll try to... Sh actually, you know what? I'm going to shoot the monitor until I see somebody zapping it. As long as I don't hit the big monitor, I think we're good. So I'm going to just turn and just get one shot and then see where we are. Oops. That looks good. I'll do as delayed as possible, Twin Blaze. That way we just unlock no matter what here. Should be GG for this. Oh, I thought it was going to another monitor. What happened there? That was weird. There we go. Oh well. Yeah, I have a machine percentage twin blaze, which is kind of sick. So it's a lot of ATP. Maybe not as much as Galatine, but it's still pretty good. I decided to help Dango that time slightly. I didn't leave him to die to the other thing. <laughs> it's gonna be like. Should probably help. I clipped with, I think, two discas, and then I think another disca helped. Alright, let's set up a nice little freeze trap combo. Oh, with that level 30, that doesn't kill. Okay, good to know. I gotta get used to Hue cast on uh, different party comps. I guess I'll do a pity freeze trap here. Get used to the run. I could have gone for the speed run version, but let's not do that. I'm willing to wait. I think our team was kind of far behind. Goodbye. Alright, so we're gonna kill the Deldies. I think that's the only optional kill that I want in here. Nice. Ooh, didn't kill. 45 hit Gladius. that useful for anything, sadly. Even tucking it up to 55, not good enough. Perfect. Oh, no. Not perfect. <laughs> Close. Okay. Uh, back to right hand gonna go. Thank you for the heal. 
a soul atomizer on that. Walked into the buffs, which is good. Feed my mag casually while going towards the boss. There we go. So we'll just have to make sure when we're playing with the raw moral that we go to the raw moral pretty much no matter what, since we need Shifta, and Shifta will probably wear out on the final phase pretty early. So we're doing really good for clears here. Good job, team. I'm gonna go for the double that's over here. Nice. I think I got a- okay, we're doing good, we're doing good. Just gotta hopefully- maybe I preempt a shot? Nice! Oh no! Thought that was the last one. Miscounted. I'm gonna be careful I'm not too far from where I'm at now. Almost got the shot out. Yeah, sadly, I know I don't have the accuracy to land the special. I think I swapped into Charge Raygun on time, I think. I'm still gonna lightly menu it regardless here. I saw myself enter the menu. I don't know if it actually swapped. No, it did not. Unfortunate. <sighs> I should have gone left, actually. That was a mistake. Uh, dodge it, though. If this multi hits me, I swear. Unlucky. Uh. Getting clipped by the fireball sucks. Oof. Oh, wait, I'm invincible. I don't have to dodge anymore. So I don't have to dodge anymore. I might as well just do this. All right, chat, that works out, I guess. Man, that freeze damage is insane. So I'm gonna walk forward, and while I'm walking forward, I'm gonna tap my heal button. There we go, I got the full three three hit combo out. We're five hits if I'm using pistol. Oh, we're doing real good with damage. Good job, team. Good job. Land those foeys. Yeah, foe. Oh, we're so close. So close. Uh I'm probably just gonna revive. Yeah, that's fun. Oh, die to Foey? Die to Foey? Is it gonna die? Yeah! Shame kill with Foey! Yeah! Good job, team. Foeys matter. Look at that. You saved like seven seconds. <laughs> Foey for the win. Foey MVP. There we go. You know, those are pretty good. High level play. Forces needed less, sadly. It's a little hit, touches the lore, and it's all over. Yeah, sub 13, I'm happy with that. Considering we do the Del D checks and everything else, I'm good. Nicely done. I will probably go grab extra money from my bank, sadly. So I'm up for one more TTF. There we go, that should be good now. And since I'm here, I might as well restock. Normally I don't restock until like every three or four, but... Already had to go back for money. I give a trust buy. Time to get my quest money. There we go, 896 health for remote battery. Slowly learning to tank falls. 
Duke has brutal training. Wow, Forges was A rank, really? Okay, whatever. Usually he's just upset with me always. Final run of the stream. Yeah, the ice is pretty bad. I see people talking about bringing Cure Fre Freeze into Falls. I just, I'm not a believer in it, to be honest with you. I'll reference it in my guide, but I feel like it's just the fact that it hits you multiple times. It doesn't even matter the fact that it freezes you or not, because it still hits you multiple times. It's just one of those things. It's only annoying if it freezes you on the final hit, and then you can't dodge the spinners as easily. Then, then I would agree with it fully, but most of the time it just clips me for like 1300, and I'm like, really? Dumb. Yeah, at this point, 113 Hue cast with all of the stats he's gained so far. Or it should be pretty easy solo at this point for you. It should be like night and day difference compared to before and after stream. Just casual, like 100 more uh, ATP and a bazillion more health. Oh, thank you for box checking for me. I'll put another Confuse Trap down for them. It probably won't kill without Zalur. I'd just like to think I put him low. Anyway, back to Disco Rayman strategies. I actually landed triple special on an enemy. That is so disgusting. That should that should be banned on Hughcast. <laughs> so dumb. Oh, thank you for the heals. So yeah, this character is going up steady. I, I think you'll see him probably closer to 158, maybe next time he's on stream. Just because I'll be doing box runs over and over off stream, solo. Since it is a Phantasmal World 3, currently in RBR. AKA the Sky ID Dream. Like, look, I could get XP and I can get potentially something from Morphos that's useful. Okay. Nothing but boxes. Let's go. I think I timed it well there? Yeah, he took damage there. That worked. Yeah. Team without using Sacrifice, three heavy attacks is strong enough to kill with very light assistance. And if I use Sacrifice, they think he dies in two combos instead of three. Or three parts of the combo, I mean. The same strategy again. We're just going to beat the, the chat into the next room. So they can take time looking for whatever they want. There we go. We're running it slightly more efficiently. Although, I guess if I hold up, I can leave sooner. But as I said before, it's, it's the... Do I go further up to go here? And risk... Uh, not having, uh, what's it called? I guess easy access to things like power materials and boss drops. So I'd like to stay roughly in the middle of the arena. That's my compromise. It's not the best at either, but man, does it feel bad to take a full arena walk and back. Feels like I don't do anything. Oh, if that actually hit the heavy hit, that would have killed the Lily. That's so sad. Anyway, back to slime duping. So 16 kills here is probably one of the most efficient ways of checking for PDs and also materials. So you'd be surprised what you can end up giving the team by doing this. We did this during the anniversary event. I think the final total was 6 PDs, 2 luck materials, and 1 Lava's Cannon chance by duping. That otherwise would not have happened. Take that. Oh, power material right at the end. I don't want to go back for it though. Yeah, it's a shame. And the best part is since they're waiting to kill the other enemy, by the time they do actually physically kill it, I've already killed the slime, so they'll know if they have to go from my telepipe back in order to get materials. I'm gonna save money. 30,000 is good enough. 
That's how much I'm willing to spend on a run on a multiplayer TTF, unless I'm the literally only carry. <laughs> okay, so we're in the corner. Just got a die mate. Not really worth it. Move on. We'll take a slightly slower route because we're too far ahead of the group. We'll do something like this. Hopefully with the confused traps there, they should just die. Goodbye. I was going to say, one of these days, the Sky ID Uber's TTF run will pay off. Can you imagine a run in which we get, like, Lavis Cannon and Psycho Wong? That would be losing their minds for sure. So, so far on stream, we've seen a Heaven Punisher. I have never seen a Psycho Wong drop on stream for anybody in, a, in the group, specifically. Ooh, I could just stay behind and kill the Cannon bin. Oh, well. So we'll set up for the other thing. So I'm going to put a Freeze Trap. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. We're going to wait. We're going to look for the Shadow. Place. Walk away. Walk away. And dead. There we go. That's the perfect freeze trap timing. I look for the shadow and I flick it as soon as I see the graphic of the shadow suddenly get overlapped with the red of the actual graphic of the character. So I look for the shadow to let me know that it's coming up. There we go. Sadly, nothing from the Grands. <laughs> Although the bazooka kill was a nice touch as we did other things. Nicely done. Good job, team. Let's see if I can stun lock it this time. Last time I did with the monitor, so I'm going to try a slightly different angle to see if this works. Hitting that monitor is kind of hard, but the one behind me is easy for me to hit. So I'm going to go for it. I'm just going to hold it and shoot. It basically gives them a whole new thing to play with. So it's just free damage because I stopped it over there. Look at that. That was that was nice. I like that. It slipped away a little bit, but it was a good, very, very good recovery. And if it had stayed there, I still think it would have died, honestly. So two or three monitor, I think that still worked. That could have been very bad for me. My health was pretty low. Three and up one. No, thank you. I do want that mine material, though. Yeah, the Sky ID normal drops are generally not super great. Maybe that's why remote batteries set it normally. The, the chances of getting something good are low. But if they do drop, it's insane. Green ID and Viridian are a little more popular for those kinds of runs, since you will end up getting chances at things like Excalibur, which is pretty good. I'm gonna forego the early cycle into that room. I will shoot his crystal, though. So that's what we call the Ranger Syndrome. It really wanted to go after Dango for some reason, though. It's like, I detect somebody trying to snipe me, huh? Just teleports randomly. Ooh, landed the double sacrifice. That was nasty. Uh, I think I'm the only person in the room. Yeah, I think so. We'll clean up the room. Oh no, we've got a ranger friend now. So we're gonna put down two freeze traps here to make it a bit safer for us. But essentially, we just want to make sure the Del Ds are being controlled. They move very fast in multiplayer. Single player, they're actually fairly easy. Like all the all the dumb stuff that I know in single player, I just I can't show it off on stream most of the time unless I solo with this character. We're gonna switch to red handgun. Yeah, we got here before the nine minute mark. That was pretty fast, team. That's that's basically ideal. We get here before nine minutes and we did our extra checks. Beautiful. 
So like, unless I go for the fast cycle there, I don't think we could have done that too much faster, to be honest. We had a basically super fast full off phase one. It wasn't like the fastest possible, but it's, you know, it's a difference between needing to deal with the turrets and not. That's like easily 20 seconds. And I think because our overall damage is pretty high. Don't you hit me, get out of here. How did I target the far one? What? <laughs> that, that threw me off. I'm like, wait a minute. I didn't even realize I was targeting the far one right away. Joke's on you, game. I can't... The spinner health doesn't matter here. You can't nerf me. Check out rid of all those. So we're hoping that the group that's behind me will be targetable, like, right about now. Perfect. We took pot shots regardless of what was available since we wanted to try to preempt a bullet there, and that paid off. So that's that save time. <laughs> I'm like, the density and the, the ones remaining, I felt like the odds were in our favor. That time I just switched straight up to the charge ray gun since it's within a bullet to kill anyway. Loses very little, if any time. Especially if I'm not the killing shot anyway. Yeah, I got two shots in because I optimized that. Yeah, whenever we're running, we want to kind of hover Vice if we can. And if we do get close, we switch back to Vice. Ooh, great job, team. What a clean phase for Falls. So I think I survive, as we talked about before, from the Falls swipe. <laughs> I love that I'm at the same health as uh, Remote Battery. We're going to believe. I'm not going to waste the heal. <laughs> I'm holding forward. We're going to try to go for the rare triple combo. Go for it. Ooh, too slow. I took one step too far. Damn, I got two hits on it, though. That's not the worst it could have been. Apparently, it won't matter because our team damage is insane. Unless it short cycles right now, it doesn't matter. Oh, it short cycle. Dirty short cycler. Unfortunately for the boss, I am invincible, so I'm not going to bother dodging. So it's going to come down, be targetable, and then I'm going to nuke it. Ooh, big damage to the boss. The yellow got soul linked, so we're going to try to protect Dango. And by protect Dango, I mean nuke the ever-loving bejesus out of falls. There we go. Ooh, short cycled. Was not expecting that. Rip team. Yeah, you can knock me down if you want. I still survive a false wave. I'm not going to shoot right away. There we go. I missed one of my specials, but that's okay. So, got trolled a little bit. But that, you know, there's about average RNG between that phase and the previous phase. I'm still going to take this. If this is like 1230, I'll be like beautiful, honestly. If it's even lower than that, it would be amazing. So we had to deal with the soul cycle nonsense. Wow, twelve nineteen with the timer? That was really good. So yeah, that was like end game run pace. <laughs> like when you have like a fully optimized team, it's usually like an eleven thirty or like an eleven fifteen, and that's usually skipping a lot of the other hunts. So if we had skipped other hunts, for example, we would have shaved at least fifteen seconds off, depending on which hunts we were doing. Doing the uh, Sinnoh clear is usually about a 12 minute run when fully optimized. But we do fight the Barans, which is less optimized. Yeah, good job team. You'd be proud of that timer. Ooh, 908 health. <laughs> Remote battery moving up in the world. Soon you will be tanky instead of squishy. So yeah, not bad. Thank open. you for following TS Gooey. You enjoyed the runs, but we are about to end the stream. Perfect. So, let's chat about how things went. Oh, I see Hellcleave in the lobby. Actually, Hellcleave, you want to do a trade before I log off? 
So once I log off, I'm not coming back. <laughs> I'm just like, I'll make the game real quick. Leave I owe Hell Cleave some PDs. Hell Cleave will let me know the cost. I don't have any faux neural mags. I have like one for when I originally made them. Five, okay, that's fine. Hell Cleave helping me alleviate my max PDs issues. Thank you, Hell Cleave. So I made one like a long time ago for my first original faux neural, and then I was like, I don't really want to make like two more or even three more to be honest. Nice. We'll take that. So this will free up some stats. You can see their max stats are kind of weird. Like 97 mine, 62 dex, 36 power. Like what a trip. <laughs> like this is a mag you do not want to level up with. This is like a I'm done with the game. Now I wear it. Like that is just an, an abysmal spread. But anyway, thank you Hulk Lee. So I think overall, I mean, we got a Parasitic Gene Flow today. No Galatine, but we did get a Smart Link uh, earlier. And I think from the standpoint of overall XP, I mean, I think everybody's ults basically got a ton of levels. This character is 24 levels from using Red Ring. So I have 24 levels to find a Red Ring with them and see what happens. So I think we had a really good mix overall on this stream of... Uh, da, 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 da. RT, RBR, TTF. I think we had decent quest variety. So hopefully the people watching on YouTube enjoy the different uh, segments of each. Each one a bit more focused after the initial showcase. But yeah, I think that's it for me. So hope you all enjoy the rest of the week. I don't intend on doing more streams at all uh, for PSO aside from the guide. So with that, I'm going to say, I guess, goodbye to YouTube. So if you did watch to this point in the video or the VOD, I'd like to say thank you again for watching. Hope to see you again in the next part.